Hello everybody, this is me and welcome to episode one of my stable renovation series. So yes, we're going to be renovating the stables. I know in the past you guys have loved my spring cleaning videos, so this year we're going bigger and better than ever. So the stables we built about four years ago and since then the horses haven't really looked after them. They're looking a little bit tatty, they're a bit muddy, so they need cleaning. So the first thing we're going to do, there's going to be lots of different steps, is we're going to be pressure washing everything we're also going to be painting the stables as well so in a sec I'll show you all of my paint samples we're also going to be extending the stables so yes we're gonna have an ex two extra stables I'm gonna talk a little bit later about what's gonna be going in there don't get too excited um, and then we're also going to be swapping the feed room with the tack room so yes the tack room is going to be a lot bigger that definitely isn't because of my matchy matchy problem but anyway, I'm going to quickly show you my paint samples because there are quite a few. <laughs> All right, so welcome to my wall of indecision. Uh, we have lots of different paint samples here. So the first three that we chose were too dark and then we decided to pick two others and these two were too light. So we're a little bit Goldilocks and the three bears. Um, so we ended up picking these two as well. And these were more what we were looking for, sort of like a medium gray, not too light, not too dark. In the end, we decided to go for this gray. However, I think if we go back here to the lighter ones, this was supposed, this color is called light gray. To me, this looks white or like an off-white. So I think we're gonna use that as sort of some accents. So maybe around the edges of the tack room door. I don't know, I feel like that could look quite nice and neat. And also this dark gray that we thought that we weren't gonna use, or maybe I think it's this one actually. We're gonna paint the inside of the stable door because we have our stable doors open quite a lot as you would have seen. And uh, I just feel like this is gonna be a bit more of a practical color, especially as the horses like to get mud and poo on it. So I think that's gonna be a bit better. So today we are going to be pressure washing the stables, which is gonna be so satisfying. So I can't wait for that. Let's go. All right, guys, I am now here with the pressure washer. I've also put a few layers on because I'm going to be standing out here. Like usually my cleaning videos, I get pretty warm because I'm moving around. But I feel like with the pressure washer, I'm just going to be standing there going up and down and it might take a little while. So I want to be warm and comfy. Um, but anyway, I've had a little go and I feel like I'm not going to have to do too much on the top because it's not too dirty there. It's down at the bottom that has like mud splats on and that kind of thing. So anyway, this is going to be so satisfying. Let's go. <laughs> this bit here by the lock is the worst and that's because when the horses are free range this is Casper's favorite spot he will stand here if we're not even in the feed room like he loves to stand here and just stare at the door and I think he thinks that if he stares at it long enough it will open and food will appear which won't happen I'm sorry Casper but there's lots of little brown marks where his dirty grubby mouth has been like rubbing against here trying to get in and he can get in there if the bolts unlocked like he knows how to open this up which is actually really funny but um, that's why it is absolutely disgusting there's so much grime but if I take you over here you can really see how well the pressure washer has been cleaning all of these areas like look at the difference that was pretty much like like a really dark brown almost black and like here it's like almost orange with how different it is but this this is gonna take a while it's gonna take a while so lots of time lapses <laughs> close this in ages oh my gosh you can see that I haven't closed it in ages 
this is the colour the stables were when they were first built. Look at the difference. That's so funny. Also, I had to really deep clean this area here because that's where the horses also like to put their nose on and get it all grubby, especially Joey, because when he's here in his stable and I'm opening the tack room door, he always likes to nose around and see what's happening. So um, I'm glad I've done a good clean of that. Oh my goodness, I cannot get over the difference. There's also a lot of cobwebs behind that. So um, I better get carry on and carry on cleaning because this is gonna, again, take quite a while. the other side of Joey's doors and if you can see here it's a slightly different colour now Joey has this weird thing don't know what it is but he always licks the door here I don't know if he's gonna be upset if I paint it and maybe it doesn't taste how it did before I don't know what it is do you guys have a horse that likes licking strange things because Mickey well you guys know licky Mickey but this is like a specific spot so that's a little bit strange. He's always done it, but that's his licking spot. So as you can see, the door's absolutely filthy. So I am very glad that I'm gonna be painting this a slightly darker gray. <laughs> Exhausting. Oh my goodness. Okay, anyway, so Joey's um, doors took so long. Oh my goodness, especially in his licking spot. I was just standing there holding it and it was very, very slowly all the dirt was coming off. Um, so that took quite a while, but you can kind of see the difference again with Mickey's top door because obviously it's permanently open. We never, you know, shut him in the darkness. So this is like so weird to see this colour of what the stables used to be like. Obviously, you know, as time goes past, the wood does silver up and things, but it'll be really interesting to see what it looks like when it's clean, like the top and the bottom. But anyway, time to get on to Grubby Mickey's stable. You're not in this on your own. twine tied to the top door because I can't remember how long ago it was I, I, I completely forgot about this but for like a week this door the top one kept blowing shut by the wind so every morning when, when I went to come and give the horses their breakfast Casper had his top door shut and he was so sad um, so I'm gonna have to untie this to open it up there we go because I need to shut it up to do more pressure washing there we go it is been so satisfying watching all of this like oh my goodness I'm loving this cleaning this is very therapeutic you know just mindfulness just let your mind wander while you're doing some pressure washing you know you need to get outside 
do some cleaning. I'm having a great time. I'm actually really enjoying this. So I hope it looks very satisfying, back with funky music and being sped up. But anyway, let's get back to it. Alright everybody, this is what the stables are currently looking like. I think the things that look the most different and stand out to me that look like, wow, that's been cleaned, is actually the inside of these doors. I think it's because that's where the horses like lick, they kick it, they get mud on it, so you can really see a difference, especially when Joey's on his licking spot. Then as we come over here, you can see some areas that I've cleaned a little bit harder than others, such as around the lock, where obviously greasy, dirty, muddy hands and horses' noses um, cause a lot of dirt here, so that's why it's looking extra clean, because it took me a while to get the mud off those areas. Then as we come over here to the feed room doors, soon to be the new tack room. Um, it's actually looking really good, especially as it's dried off pretty quickly. Like this is almost completely dry because obviously I did this quite a while ago. You can kind of see there's some areas where it's quite different in color. That's why I'm very glad that we're painting the stables. If not, I probably would have done a bit of a better pressure washing job, but this will be great for, um, in a, well, tomorrow I'll probably start sanding it down because it's too wet to do that now. Then get it all ready for the paint job, which is gonna, again, be, I feel like that's gonna be even more satisfying than the pressure washing because it's gonna be a completely different color. It's just gonna look so good, I can't wait. <laughs> So we're not done yet. I'm gonna to have to do a lot of sweeping because um, all of the water that obviously came off the stables was very mucky and it was actually quite satisfying because you see all this black grimy water coming off. But it does mean it's all over the yard and we don't particularly want the nice clean concrete that I actually swept today to get disgusting. So I'm gonna to have to do some sweeping now. I actually did a little bit of pressure washing on the floor, especially where the tap is, because it had quite a lot of green, like algae kind of stuff on, um, and it was very satisfying to get off. But now, yeah, there's a lot of water, so I'm gonna to have to sweep, sweep it all away. <laughs> Told me I'm your anchor, I told you you're my pole Through the wind and fire we try to hold on We build a ship together, searching for a home Despite the storm that hears, we're still on board Dancing in the moonlight, the world just stop and stares We got no destination, I'll take you anywhere All the doors we've opened, and all the books we've closed Words just come together, story that we never told I have now finished pressure washing the stables, sweeping the yard, so it is looking so nice now. But anyway, I thought I would talk a little bit about the stable extension, because I know you guys are gonna be very excited about that, like I am. So one side is gonna be a wash bay, because having three greys, or technically a grey, uh, two greys and a cromello, but I just say three greys because it's easier, or basically, three impractically coloured horses. It involves a lot of washing. So to have an area that has warm water, maybe a solarium one day, that is the dream, but somewhere that I can just wash my horses because they get pretty dirty a lot, especially in the winter, having somewhere nice and warm for them will be amazing. Um, and also the other side is gonna be a stable, but for now, it's just gonna be a storage sort of area. So in there, we're gonna put the haylage and the shavings and all the big bulky stuff like that, um, just to have that as an area because we are gonna be swapping the feed room and the tack room over to have a bigger tack room. The feed room's gonna be a lot smaller. And we're not gonna be able to fit that stuff in there. So in the feed room will just probably be the feed so yeah, that is the plan. Very exciting. Fingers crossed everything goes well. 
But I thought, I am so excited to paint, and obviously I can't paint these walls yet because I still need to sand them, still need to wait for them to dry. So I thought, the wall of indecision, I might have a little go at painting that now because I just can't wait, guys. I'm too excited and I kind of want to see what it looks like all in the nice grey colour. All right, so I've got my paint, I've got my brush, I've got my um, screwdriver for opening it up. <laughs> but anyway, I am on my, what, third change of clothes today. Uh, I've actually tied my hair up because I am such a mucky pup. I just know I'm gonna get paint absolutely everywhere. I also have my dad's old fleece on that already. This is a painting fleece because obviously it's got some paint on it. It's also got some mud on it. Don't know what has happened there, but I'm wearing, the fashion police should come and arrest me because I don't know what, what I'm wearing today. Um, this is definitely my sort of farmy, painting DIY outfit. I've also got my gloves on because I don't want to get paint on my hands. Um, the only thing fashionable I've got on at the moment is really, you know, my hat. I'm still vibing with that. But anyway, let's let's go for this colour. Let's give it a paint, see how it goes. Hopefully it will all be good. So. so this is just the tester. We have lots of big pots, but look how pretty that is. That is a This Is Me Grey. <gasps> so nice. Okay, let's go people. Do you know what the smell reminds me of? When I painted my old baby furniture to use as a saddle pad wardrobe, it smells just like that. It reminds me of when I used to, when I painted that. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh, I love the color. It's so pretty. Oh, I think a twig just got in there. Get out. There it is, the little twig. Okay, bye bye. All right, so I think this is gonna take quite a while, so I'll see you guys in a time lapse. <laughs> video here I'm actually super happy with the color I've chosen obviously it does need an extra coat on top but I'm really excited for the next video because I'm gonna be taking all of the guttering off we're gonna be sanding everything down which is also gonna be very satisfying obviously painting the whole stables and I don't know how long until the extra extension is put up but that's very exciting too. Um, but anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe as it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. Hello everybody, this is me and welcome to episode two of my stable renovation series. So last episode, I pressure washed the whole stables and they're looking so much better now. There was so much like dirt and grime on them, so they're looking a lot better. But today the plan is to sand them down. I also at some stage need to take all the guttering off because I've got to paint underneath that. And also in today's episode, I'm gonna be doing some painting. So you're gonna get the color reveal. You're gonna see what it looks like. So I'm gonna, it's probably gonna take quite a few days, so there might be quite a lot of outfit changes because I'm not gonna be able to get this done all in one day. We're gonna see how it goes. The plan is for today is to sand, if I have time, take off the guttering, but it's looking a lot better at the moment. But yeah, let's get sanding. All right, so I've had a little start here. You can really see the difference. Um, so even though I pressure wash the stables, I feel like sanding is just gonna be the icing on the cake to make it look amazing. It is a little bit boring, so don't worry, there's gonna be lots of sped up time lapses and funky music to make this a little bit more interesting. Um, but I feel like if I just painted it now, it wouldn't look as good as if I sanded it because prep work is very important. So I'm gonna put some tunes on myself because if not, I'm gonna get a bit bored doing this. So I'll have something to dance along to and um, I will try 
and make everything look as good as this pit here that I've sanded. But it is quite satisfying, I'm not gonna lie. Some bits more than others, like here where I kind of didn't pressure wash it as much as I could. Um, there's a bit of a difference, but just a little bit and it feels so much smoother and it looks so much better. And just a kid growing up in a small town All I ever really needed was my crew around And sweatpants, no fear on the t-shirt Basic kids, but we always had a chauffeur I found my ride or die for life Whew. I've only done the barn doors and I am exhausted. This is such a workout. Um, but yeah, this is going to take me quite a while i think so i'm pretty much gonna be here all afternoon sanding but you know what it's gonna be worth it in the end guys it's gonna look so pretty and yeah it's gonna look really good something i'm also gonna have to do today is the steel on here it has been put through its paces it's been put through casper so it's looking a little bit worse for wear we're gonna have to take this off probably tomorrow because if not i'm not gonna be able to lock up tonight um we'll give that a little bit of a paint and it'll look as good as new Fingers crossed, hopefully. <laughs> As you guys know from the last episode, this is Joey's favorite spot to lick. And since we've pressure washed it, he is still licking it. So I don't think it's to do with the flavor because I was gonna say when we washed all the dirt away, we might have washed away the flavor. I don't know, but he still likes to lick it. It's kind of stained more green now, probably from where he's had his like dinner or his breakfast and then licked it. But um, I'm gonna have to sand this down. So it'll be interesting to see once I've painted it, if he'll still want to lick it or not. All right, so now it's time to take the guttering down. So here I have a ladder that I'm gonna climb up and hopefully not fall off because that would not be a good idea. Uh, luckily our guttering is on little clips, so it should be not too difficult to un clip. Oh, there we go. Let's not fall off the ladder. Let's not fall off the ladder because I don't want to go to a uni. Yay! Woo! I have the gutter! Okay, wait, that bit's still attached. Oh no. Hello everybody. This is my gutter. I hope you like it. Um, I'm gonna come down here because I do not trust myself. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this around the corner. Wee! Ladder time, ladder time. All right, one piece of ladder? Well, not one piece of ladder. One piece of guttering down. Many more to go. Uh-oh. Ah, got it. Reverse, reverse. No. Do not reclip yourself. Ooh, I am high up. I am high in the sky. Oh, that doesn't look healthy. Reverse, reverse. I don't want to go higher. We out. Mm -mm. This is where I'm going to get all the dead leaves in the guttering on my face. Oh, oh, timber. <laughs> I got it. Whee! This is my gutter. Do you, would you guys like a gutter haul? We have um, some leaves. We have some pine needles. We have some, I don't know what. And we have, it's probably like a whole, whole colony living in this, but um, I didn't realize how, how disgusting my gutters were. So, um, I'll, we'll see you guys once I've got the last little pieces down because I don't want to fall off a ladder and be focusing on filming rather than de-guttering. All right guys, we have taken all of the guttering down. The stables have been sanded, so they're all ready for tomorrow for painting. They're all prepped, so I'm really excited for the painting. Um, I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek of what it's looking like around the corner because I have painted one side and it is looking so good. I've done two coats and I just can't wait until the whole stables are looking amazing. Welcome to Messy Corner. Ta-da! As you can see, it's a really nice shade of gray. Hopefully this color gray, the mud won't show up too much on, but at least it'll be like easy to wash down and things. We've had to do quite a lot because obviously we have the yard light here, so we had to take off 
all of these like electricity cables um, to paint underneath but it's not looking bad we haven't done the top bit yet because I think we're going to paint that white just so then it's not all grey you know it's got a bit of dimension to it got a bit of different colours but no it's not looking too bad I've started doing around the back as well I don't know if I'm going to show you guys that yet probably not because I just want to give you a sneak peek you'll get to see the painting tomorrow or in today's video tomorrow for me but anyway I will see you later when it's painting time all right guys it's now the next day um, I'm currently wearing my barn potato outfit because yes today is painting day I don't want to wear my really nice stuff because obviously don't want to get paint on that um, I also have a screwdriver here because I need to take off all of the bolts and things off the barn doors because obviously yesterday we sanded it all so it's all nice and prepped and ready for painting but I do need to take a few bits off so here we are we're going to be taking off yeah, obviously the bolts and things so let's go there's one okay let's not lose those I'm going to put these in the bucket so I don't lose them oh wow oh there's a little spider crawling out wow it seems so weird to see it without it why all right guys everything's off I've sanded it down, it's all ready. I have my paint and my paintbrush here and it's finally time to get started. Let's go, this is so fun. Do, do, do. Where do I start? Decisions, decisions, I'll just go here. Oh, wow, I love the color so much. I've seen them come and I've seen them go a million times before. That's why I'm holding on. Cause I got you, baby Yeah, I got you, baby In 19 with a dream and a paycheck The white V rip knee chain around my neck And honestly, that's when I noticed things were changing Lost myself in approval on the stages I needed something that was real I found it in a world and love might get lost, but then it's found again. And friends might be friends into the very end. All right, guys, I thought I'd have a little break, but this is what it's looking like. I think it actually looks so good. Anyway, so um, it's actually really funny because when I was painting it, it looks a lot more dramatically different on this side compared to the little bit I did around the back because around the back, it's been weathered a lot more. So the wood's a bit more silvery. So it honestly doesn't look that different around the back, but here it's like, whoa, she's done some painting. It looks different. I feel like it's gonna be almost unrecognizable. The yard once it's painted, it's gonna look so different, but I think it's gonna look really smart. So here I actually have some spray paint. So um, the little bits that were on here that I took off, they're going to be painted as well but obviously we're going to do that in black because that's the colour it was before I still think that looked really nice a bit of contrast but yeah I've got a bit of cardboard down here time to spray them I've seen them come and I've seen them go a million times before that's why I'm holding on cause I've got you baby yeah I've got you baby said I've got All right, guys, it is now day three. Yes, it might not look like it. I'm wearing the exact same stuff because these are my painting clothes. Don't judge me. Um, but it's looking so good on this back wall here. I'll give you a little sneak peek of what it's looking like. We did finish this wall yesterday. So today, the plan is to do the other wall, which is where the horse's stables are. Now, um, I'm gonna try my best to do as much as I can, but I do have to get the horses in this evening and it's now the afternoon because I've been busy doing other things this morning such as riding the horses, mucking out, emails, admin, the usual. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually clean the metal parts of the stable doors because I don't know what is on it but there's bits of the horses dinner and breakfast snot probably they like to wipe their faces on it there'll be saliva on Mickey's a hundred percent so I have a warm bucket of water I have some washing up gloves that I'm gonna wear because um, my hands got really cold painting the other day. Not that these will keep me warm, but it just means my hands won't be getting wet because that will not be very fun. Um, I also have some like K2 
kitchen cleaner. So if it doesn't come off well, I might use that afterwards, but I've just had a little go. This is a sanding block that I have wetted with warm water. If I give it a little sand, it's actually coming off really well. Like, look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing a little bit of this and I'll see you guys afterwards. As you can see, this is actually working so well, but I have no idea like what all of this is. Like, Joey, mate, what have you been up to? Wow. It's coming off easily though, so that's good. I remember when I first saw your face and how everything changed that day. I remember trying hard to ignore the signs, but I couldn't and I didn't know why. I remember when I ran so oh far, like speeding trains in the passenger car. And I remember that you still came back for me. I tried to run and hide, but you were by my side. I can remember thinking you were crazy, love, but I don't mind. You wouldn't let me go. All right, so I have finally finished cleaning the horses, like the metal part of their stables. Now, Joey's wasn't too bad and Casper's was probably the easiest to clean. But Mickey, on the other hand, oh my goodness, there were some parts I thought, this is never gonna come off. So I was sitting there scrubbing this one patch over and over and it did eventually go away. But there's probably about four years of Mickey's slobber on these stable doors. So no, what? no wonder it took me so long, but they're looking clean now, which is great. They're giving them a little dry off. Also, I'm really sorry, but when I was pressure washing the horse's stables, the Y, accidentally got pressure washed off. So I'm sorry, Mickey is now referred to as Mickey. No why. But or I could I was thinking I could just take the E off and he could be Mick. But I'll probably just get a new one because I don't know. I feel like Mickey deserves to have his name. And that is the wind blowing the door shut. Um, but anyway, now I have done that, it's finally time to get started with the painting on this wall. I don't know if I want to do just the walls first today and then maybe do the doors another day because obviously you're gonna have to get the horses in in a few hours. So I'm gonna try and do as much as I can without it getting too sloppy, too messy, because there's a lot going on. That's why I did this one second. The other wall, that's fine. There's only two doors. This, there's bolts. I've got to take the name plates off. I've got to take the hooks off. There is a lot to do. So this, this series is definitely going to take me a good couple of days to finish filming because what are we on? Day four, but actually it's day three for this episode. So we're going to be here a while, but good thing it's fun. <laughs> take it slow. And now my heart is changing now. said hello i was blind and i didn't know i remember that your love lit up the dark but i couldn't seem to find that spark i remember when you gave it your all climbing walls that i wouldn't let fall and i remember when they did you stuck around i tried to run and hide but you were by my side i can remember thinking you all right, guys, I've just finished painting Joey's stable door and this wall here, and it's not looking too bad. Obviously, it needs another coat, and then it'll be looking as good as this wall here, which you will see not too long. Um, but no, I'm really happy with how it's going. Um, I obviously need to do the rest of this wall, so this is gonna take me a while. So I will see you guys when I'm finished with painting for today. I don't know if I think maybe like a black horseshoe in the tack room could look really nice, or a rose gold one or I could do like a little rainbow wall of horseshoes. I don't know, I'm still deciding what I think would look nice. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys when I finish painting for the day. All right guys, it's now a new day. It's been a little while because I've done quite a lot of filming off camera. That's why my hair's different. I'm actually in a different outfit today because it suddenly feels like it's become spring now. In the first episode, I was wearing a million layers. Now I'm just in a t-shirt. You guys might actually recognize this top because I used to wear it all the time, like two, three years ago, like ages ago, but it is permanently stained. I don't know from what, but um, so it's gonna be my new painting top. Um, but anyway, we have done 
pretty much all of the stables with one coat. So you can see I've got one coat on here. But if I take you over here, this is what we're gonna be doing today, which is very exciting. So here we have the inside of Mickey's stables. So we're gonna be actually painting this in a different color, in a dark gray to make it a little bit more practical because knowing Mickey, I don't know what he'll get on there, but it will be disgusting in a few days time. So if we come over to Joey's, here is one I have done earlier. You can see it's just a bit more of a darker gray. I think it looks really nice just having a pop of like a different color, even though they're very similar. It just adds a bit more tones to it, I think. And obviously it will be more practical, but I think it's looking good. Obviously it needs another coat, but yeah, I feel like it's gonna be really super satisfying to do Mickey's stable doors. So let's get painting. Wouldn't let me go. You let me take it slow And now my heart is changing I've been thinking, baby I wanna love you better I wanna love you better I wanna love you better All right, the top door is now painted and oh my goodness, I forgot how much the, I don't know what it is with the wood of these doors, but it really soaks in the paint compared to obviously the walls. Also, the little window here, we are planning on painting the outside of that in like the light gray or what, it pretty much looks white. So I'm just gonna call it white. Um, but yeah, hopefully it's gonna look really smart. Now onto this one, I'll see you guys when I'm done. I wanna love you better. I wanna love you better. I wanna love you better than before. All right guys, I have now finished painting the stables there are a few more finishing touches that i need to do like second coats but filming a second coat isn't that interesting so i thought i'd finish today's video here but um we've had a little bit of a rush today very exciting we have the new stables being built tomorrow so don't worry i'm going to film the whole process of that take you guys along with me so that will be in the third episode the stable reveal um, so any anyway guys thank you so much for watching today's video if you're new or have not done so already please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and i really do appreciate it and i'll see you all next time bye Hello everybody, this is me and welcome to episode three of the Stable Renovation series. So yes, today is the day that the stable extension is coming in. In the last episode, we painted all of the stables, but we do have a little bit more painting to do in this episode, because obviously the new stable block's coming, so we need to paint that to match. Um, so far, I think it's looking so good. I'll do a little sneak peek of um, this side of the wall, even though it's gonna be covered, we decided to paint it just in case because the extra stable block is going to be a tiny bit lower um, but look how cute it is with the white trim I think it's looking so smart but anyway this morning I have been so busy I've been up at the crack of dawn to do all the horses get them out do a makeshift electric fence so they're not going to be in the way of all of the construction also, while they've been in this area, they have decided to poo, to get mud all over the concrete where the stable's gonna be, uh, which wasn't great. So I had to get up early to move all the poo away. I even had to get some water to try and wash some of the pooey bits off. So um, if I'm looking a little bit tired, that is why, because um, they are coming here at eight o'clock this morning. So it's very early. I've already done so much. I am tired out from doing all that. I've had to do a lot of sweeping, but anyway, they should be here soon. So I'll be back with you guys when they start the building. I always learn in the hardest of times to search for light. It's easy to turn to the darkness in my mind but I'll be Try and fly, but I only ever get so high. I will never give up my fight, even if it burns all night. I can feel.
now the next day and the new stable block is up. It's right here behind me. But before I show you and give you a little sneak peek, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to every single one of you for watching my videos. If it wasn't for you guys, this project wouldn't have been possible. I wouldn't have been able to afford the new stable block. I probably wouldn't be able to even have Joey if it wasn't for you guys. So I just want to say a huge thank you because it does really mean so much to me. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour of what it looks like at the moment. It's not quite finished yet because as you can see, this stable block is pine and the rest is gray. And that's actually one of the main reasons why I decided to paint the stable block, because if not, that would be a really dark brown wood. And this is obviously a fresh new pine and it wouldn't, it wouldn't quite look right, you know? It would take a while for it to look like it was all part of one yard, if that makes sense. So I thought if I paint everything, it looks like it's been here, this stable block, the whole time and nobody will know. But anyway, I thought I'd show you what I have each side in a little bit more detail. I know I've talked about it in other videos, but here we have the brand new stable. So it's right next to Casper's. If we give it a little open up. A lot of people have asked me what I'm gonna be using this as. All I'm gonna say, is that for now it's gonna be storage. It could be a stable one day. I don't know, we will see um, if that's gonna be the distant future or not too long, I don't know. But for now it's gonna be storage for shavings and for haylage. But I thought I'd show you guys inside while it's now nice and new. So here we have it. Very cool, very airy. It's the exact same size and shape as the boys is next door, so same as Casper's, Mickey's, Joey's is obviously a bit of a bigger stable, but um, it's all pretty much exactly the same. It has the same window, so they can all look out and have the same view, um, even though it's gonna be storage for now. It's gonna be storage. It's gonna be storage, Esme. Um, we also have the translucent roof sheet up here as well, so it's nice and airy, which is really important because if not, you're gonna have a quite dark and dingy stable. Translucent roof sheets, very important. So if we go next door, we have the wash bay. So you might be wondering, Esme, why are there these planks here? So we actually have these here because in case I want the horses to be free range, so they can go in their stables if they want to, they can go in the field if they want to. I don't want them going in here, messing it up, you know. Also, I feel like it's gonna be a whole separate video getting the whole wash bay done and sorted. Although I was like, okay, it'll be probably like a three part series. I feel like there are gonna be so many other parts to this series that are gonna be coming on later, probably not until the summer. I don't know how long it's gonna take because obviously we have the whole tack room renovation that we're gonna be doing. And also this wash bay, it is not complete yet. We don't have, well, we have a water pipe, but we don't have a hose pipe in here yet. The solarium isn't here yet. We need some mats that need to go in here. I want to decorate it as well. I want to have like a wall with all of my shampoos, grooming brushes, everything I need to make sure that my horses are not covered in poo and mud. Um, so that's gonna be a whole separate project, I think, because that's gonna take a while. But yeah, here we have the wash bay. Again, the exact same size as the stable. These can come down. I think I'm gonna get cross ties. I think that would be really nice. So then baby Joey, he does like to wiggle a little bit. Um, if he doesn't have a haylage net, if he has a haylage net, he's fine standing still, but if he doesn't, he like moves his butt around to the left, to the right, not because he's like moving away from me, but he just, he's a bit of a baby, a bit of a fidgeter. He, he's always got something he wants to look at or sniff or do, so it would just mean it'd be a better, more controlled environment. So um, I think that would be really nice. Um, we also have a little, if I, well, I'll take you guys inside and you can have a little look. Shimmy on under here. So I'd show you the inside. This wall, not gonna lie, looks a little bit ugly because it's got all the writing on. So I don't know if I want to paint in here or not. We will see. Maybe like do half dark with light at the top because that's very, I feel like that's a very British thing to have in stables, but I don't know. We will see what I decide. Here we have, have the water. We have the good old pipe here, so we need to sort that out. Um, I also would really like to have warm water for the horses. So it does mean I can give them lovely warm baths in the winter because in the winter, having three greys. I, I don't think I could do another winter, guys. It, it is absolutely soul destroying, but we have a wash bay now, so <laughs> hopefully that will, that will save me. But um, we also have a little gap here at the bottom, which we purposely have left, because it means when I'm scrub-a-dub-dubbing the horses, get my broom, sweep, 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 
water goes down there into the drain, problem solved, no flooding um, wash bay. So I am very excited to do all this up because I feel like this is one of those projects it's just gonna go on forever. There's always something that needs doing, but no, this will be very cool. But um, we're not quite done yet. We have a lot more to do. We have to paint the outside so it matches and I feel like it's gonna look so satisfying when it's all done, when all the stables are pretty. You guys haven't even seen like the proper other side of the stables painted either, so you don't really know what it looks like, which is exciting. So yeah, I'm gonna go and grab some paint. I do have my paint stuff on. That is why I'm wearing my bomb potato outfit. But yeah, time to get painting again. All right, so all these lovely shiny fixings have just been put on, but you know what we've got to do? We've got to take them off again because we've got to paint it and I don't really want to paint around these because if not, I just know I'm such a mucky pup. I'm going to get paint all over them and that would not be good. So time to take them off. Ah! Oh no, can't you lose you into the bucket? Woo, that was flying in my face. Lost track of the forest through the trees, forgot what I was chasing. Spent so many nights living out at sea that my heart is gone vacant. And everybody who was close to me all stayed on dry land. So now I'm driving back on Interstate West, I just gotta feel something. Not gonna wait till the morning, because something's gonna change my mind. I don't want to change my mind Oh, I want to stay right here, right here Chilling with my friends for another year I would walk away from the spotlight For the good light oh, Come on, turn your hate into poetry Pain into power And I need some friends And your minutes into hours I would walk away from the spotlight For the good light For the good light See my best friend Apologetic text, he says to come over Well, the whole damn town has been waiting for the day When you would come back here, back here. There was dancing and talking and steaks on the grill And I think that I will be alright And my ex from high school still looks just the same As she did back in 2009 Not gonna wait till the morning Let's never put the night on night Never put the night on night All right, guys, this is what the stable is looking like currently. It has its first coat of the tundra color on it. Um, obviously, down the bottom there, I think round the edge of the wash bay, I might do it in white. I feel like that would look really smart. Just add a pop of something else. I also need to paint the inside of the stable doors in the darker gray, but so far, not looking too bad. It's starting to, you can kind of see it and be like, oh my gosh, that's what it's gonna look like when it's done. Not quite done yet, but I'm very pleased with it. All right, guys, it's now the next day and we have finally finished painting the stables. It's looking so good, but we're not quite finished yet because if you guys know me, I like to add my little finishing touches, make it my own. So as you guys already know, I have these horseshoes that were on the horses stables all in their sort of color so i have everything color coordinated so i know that's joey's bucket or that's mickey's so uh, joey's green um casper's purple and mickey is blue so these need a little bit of tlc they need a little bit of help because um i think they need a little extra extra coat the problem that i have is is that when I painted these, I made up these exact colors. So I'm gonna try and make the exact colors again um, to try and match their nameplates. Joey's, I think, is the only one that is the exact color that was in the tin. But we're not just doing that, guys. We're not just doing that. I have so many horseshoes here. I have been collecting these for years and years now. I, my farrier is very kind. He lets me keep all of my shoes. So I have a lot and I was thinking, we have the rose gold horseshoes where I film my like sit down videos and we also have them in the feed room. But I'm thinking we go a little bit different. I was thinking rose gold could be cute, but how about 
we shake things up a little bit. I know you're gonna, you guys are gonna be gonna be shocked when I say this. We're not going colourful today. I'm thinking we paint them black because with the grey stables we have these little um, black hooks that we've put on, which looks so fancy. And I'm thinking so it's not too colourful, just like a little pop of something else. Black horseshoes. I think that will look really classy, really sleek, just a little little something. So because we are using this bad boy who is pretty impressive, um, I'm gonna put on <laughs> my goggles because I do not want any of the little bits of metal flying into my face or into my eyes, but also don't want my hair getting stuck in that. So it's not gonna be Esme anymore. You guys have got egg me. I'm going to egg mode. There we go, tuck it all behind. How do I look, guys? Good? Okay, so my ear protection is now on. Whoa, that is such a difference in what I can hear. Um, I'm now putting on, these are actually bike gloves. They're Max's, don't tell him. We're currently in the workshop that you guys would have seen in Bike versus Horse. Um, this is where we have all of the power tools and bike stuff and things. Anyway, here we go. Kind of nervous, but should be fine. I've done this so many times before, but I just feel like it's such a, it's like a, feels like I'm holding a lethal weapon here. Probably is one, so um, you've got to be careful. So while the black horseshoes are drying up at the yard, it's now time to do the colourful ones. So I'm going to do green first because that is going to be the easiest because that is the exact same colour which is awesome. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a paint. Oh my goodness guys, this is looking so much better. Whoa, look at that. It's good as new. Okay, now this is the tricky part because I've got to make this blue. Now this blue I remember being difficult to make, but it is very pretty blue. So I'm gonna put the teeniest amount. There we go, that is enough, but that is probably too much. Um, let's scoop a little bit back. Nobody saw that, guys. You might be thinking, Esme, you're making blue, but you're using green. Now that is because I am really having to do some <laughs> color theory here because the blue we have is navy. Now this navy is very different to the turquoisey, tealy blue that we have here, so. Let's get some of this out. Oh my gosh, these pots of paint are so old. I don't care how long, how long okay, now for the whites. Not gonna lie guys, this paint does not look very healthy. It looks like when you've left a yogurt in the fridge too long. Um, it feels like rice pudding. Oh, there we go. That is honestly the smallest amount I could get out, but that's such a pretty color, that's like sage. We need a bit more blue in that. But we're close. I'm just so happy I had you. The morning's near and still I can tell you how I feel. Okay. I think I'm gonna call that a day. I think that's a pretty good match. You guys know I know my matchy matchy colours. I have matched that almost perfectly. If I do say so myself. I am happy with that. Alright, so next is purple. Now purple, I remember taking me for absolutely ever last time because it was very difficult to make with the colors we have. I feel like it needed to be a little bit more pinky. So I'm just gonna mix all the colors that we have to make it a little bit more bluey. This is definitely a trust the process. We barely have any red left. It's, it's coming out. It's a little, a little slower, but it's, it's on its way. Come on, you can do it. I believe in you. Okay. It's looking a lot better. I don't, it's not the exact same. A little droplet. Let's see now. You know what? I'm happy with that. It's not the exact same, but you know what? I was looking at Casper's nameplate and I feel like the purple's a little bit more pinky anyway. So I, I reckon and that's not too bad. I'd say that's like a mushroom purple. It's actually a really pretty purple, I'm not gonna lie. 
but I reckon that will that will do. That will it'll have to do because I don't want to add too much blue and then it just look blue. All right, guys, welcome to This Is Me Garden. Yes, we had This Is Me Kitchen. Now we have This Is Me Garden with the greenhouse behind me, um, where these beautiful flowers have been kept for the last few days. So not too long ago, I actually went to my local garden centre, had a lot of fun actually. It felt like a day trip out with um, what life is like at the moment. But I thought, you know, if we're gonna go all the way with the new stables, with the painting, with the extension, with the horseshoes, how about the icing on the cake, we have some hanging baskets. So I decided when I went to my local garden centre, because there were lots of different coloured flowers there, and I know in traditional hanging baskets, usually ones that you find outside like village pubs in the UK, they have lots of different colours. Now if you're like me, I'm a very colourful per person, but it's got to go with the matchy matchy, it can't be too clashy. And I was like, what colour would look nice all the time? So obviously I went with white, white goes with everything, good basic colour, but I thought, you know what, it's going to look a little bit too boring if it's just white. You've got to add a little, little something to it. So I thought, you know what, we'll go for these pink flowers. They're kind of like a coral pink. They're so pretty. I don't want it to be too grey and boring. And also, the, one of the main reasons why I thought, you know what, hanging baskets, this is the one. These grey hanging baskets I found so nice. So it's made of this um, rattan material. It's got polythene on the inside. So I'm going to be making up the hanging baskets myself because I was like, you know what? We're going to do pick and mix, pick my own flowers, put them in there. This is very exciting for me. Don't know if it will be for you guys, but I just think it will look so pretty. It'll be like my little fairy dream horse yard. Just going to put a little bit more in. I have my compost here. Let's go. I'm just going to probably fill it up like almost halfway and then start putting the flowers in. This is my first time making hanging baskets, so if it looks a bit questionable, don't judge. We will just see how it goes. I don't know, I think we can fit four in. Because when I went to the garden centre, I was like, you know what? I want to make sure that the flowers are already out because we have a photo shoot with Pony Mag on the day I'm filming this in two days time. And it's almost the end of today. And I only have one day to prepare, which is tomorrow. So um, it's a little bit last minute, but it will be fine. And I thought, you know what? We want the flowers to be in bloom for when Pony are here. And obviously they still have quite a few buds left, which is nice. So they won't just suddenly go in a few weeks time. Um, so I'm gonna have to take this out of the pot. Okay. This is me garden is definitely like this is me kitchen. I have no idea what I'm doing. It's fine. Ah, oh, there we go. You can see the little cute roots. Okay, so here we have a dianthem, I think. There we go, I'm just gonna pop her there for now. I'm gonna take them out of the pots, put them in, and then when I put the soil in, kind of decide where I want them to go. So I think two pink, two white, that could work, that could work. There, that that's looking good. Obviously I need to put more soil in and actually bury them. But I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. That's not bad, okay. I'm gonna get me compost. Get them all in nicely. All right, so I've managed to fit four in. And I'm not gonna lie, it's looking so good. We've had a few frosts recently, so I'll pop this in the greenhouse just in case it's frosty tomorrow morning. But I reckon when they're hanging up there, it's gonna look so cute. I'm just gonna hope the horses don't eat them. We are gonna hang them high enough that they're not gonna eat them and they're not gonna be out when they're wandering around the yard. So hopefully you're not gonna be Mickey's lunch. But no, very cute, I love it. I have now finished doing the last hanging basket and they are looking so cute. I love it. But anyway, um, I think that's the last sort of thing I need to do before the big reveal, the stable tour. So I'll see you guys when it's time for that. Never knew a moment could feel so right, could slow down time like this. Everything I needed is in your eyes and in your mind Maybe it's crazy to fall so soon Give it all to you, hey, hey. But I don't care what they say, please promise me you'll stay 
Today is the day, guys. I am finally filming the stable reveal. So like most DIY shows or home renovation shows, I have decided to dress up today because I feel like in the shows, like everyone's wearing their like barn potato outfit, you know, the, all the construction gear, painting outfits, and then it's like, bam, the final reveal. So I have dressed up for you guys. I am literally wearing a dress. So appreciate this because this is a big moment for the channel. Um, so anyway, there it has probably Probably taken me actually two weeks to do just the painting and obviously we had the pressure washing and cleaning before that we had all of the sanding down and my arm my arm is still aching from the painting it took so long and paint is pretty expensive I found that out the hard way and there was a lot to paint with the stables. Um, we also had the extension put in as well. And I'd just like to say another huge thank you to you guys because you are the reason I have been able to do all of this. I've been so lucky to take you guys along with this journey. So it's been very exciting. I know it's kind of sad because it is the last episode of the stable renovation series, but we're not quite finished yet. So we've got the tack room, we've got the feed room, we've got the storage room. And we have the wash bay that I'm gonna take you guys over to now, which all need the insides um, cleaning, renovating, organizing. So that's gonna be a whole new video, maybe a whole new series. I don't know if you guys want me to call it the tack room renovation series or the stable renovation series, series two. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. But anyway, without further ado, let me give you a bit of a tour. All right, so I have never done a barn tour on my channel before. And I feel like, cause you guys kind of know what everything looks like. It would be kind of boring because you've seen it all in the vlogs before. But um, because it's so different, I thought I'd do a little bit of a whistle stop tour showing you everything. So um, here we have the currently empty wash bay. There's nothing in there apart from a few pipes. For example, we have a pipe here that will one day be a tap, not quite a tap yet. Also in the wash bay, there is so much to do because obviously we need to put the taps in. I want to have all of my grooming kits hanging across, organizing all of my shampoos on like a wall or maybe on some shelves, make it all pretty and very me, if you know what I mean. I love to decorate things. I love everything to look very aesthetic. So that's the plan for the wash bay. We have these wooden planks up at the moment in case the horses want to accidentally get in here without us being here. So um, that's sort of like a safety precaution. I also decided to paint this a darker color because I thought, you know what? It's a little bit different, a little bit more out there, just a pop of something different to make it look really cute. It also matches the stable doors up here, which I'll show you in a second. And if we come over here, we have the extra stable slash extra storage area. So I don't want to be one of those mysterious YouTubers because I've had so many questions about this. What's going to go in here? And I want to be honest with you guys. I don't know. I can tell you what it's going to be for now. For now, it's going to be hay, haylage, maybe a place to store extra things, maybe dry out rugs in here. So it's going to be storage for now. I don't know how long it will be until it's an extra stable. We'll just have to see what happens. Um, but yeah, that is going to be the storage room. And then if we come over here, so up here should look a little bit more familiar to you because this was the original stable block. We have the new one that I've just shown you. But here we have Caspi. This is his stable, as you would know from before. We still have his original nameplate and horseshoe. So what I actually decided to do was for the um, inside of the stable door and also for the top door as well. I've done it in a darker gray. I think it looks really nice because it's just got a little pop of something else, um, but also this is a much more practical color. As you can see, even here, we've got a bit of Caspi's slobber stains. He's having a nice little nap here at the moment, I think. You look very tired, Caspi. Okay, I'll see you later. Carry on with the tour. We have the hose pipe. Now this isn't just any hose pipe. If you have one of these, you will know how special and amazing they are. Oh, Caspi. Caspi has actually licked quite a lot of the hose pipe, so I didn't think that's his new favorite licking spot, but look at it. Not only is it one that you can wind up, which is so useful, it's also gray. It matches, guys. I have a matchy-matchy hose pipe. 
it doesn't get much better than that. So if we move on, we have some beautiful hanging baskets up here as well that, as you guys know, I made myself. Um, then if we come over here, we have another very sleepy pony. Hi, Mickey. It's that time of the evening where they all just get really chilled and they just kind of sit there sleepy. They've all had their dinner, so they're probably all digesting that. But again, this is Mickey's stable. He hasn't actually got it too dirty. He does like to scratch on here, so um, hopefully the paint doesn't come off too much here because that is his sort of scratchy spot. Yeah. Then if we come over here, we have the lovely Joey. Yes. Oh, thank you for the licks. You might not want to eat my dress, though because I don't usually wear clothes this nice to the horses, so I feel very like, please don't, oh gosh, he just went and licked me, just as I was about to say, please don't lick me, but you can lick my hands. As you guys know, this is Joey's favorite licking spot. He still licks it, so um, we've come to the conclusion that it's not because of the flavor, because obviously the flavor has changed since it's been painted. Don't worry guys, it is safe for him to lick it, so don't worry about that. Also, I think that Joey's nameplate and horseshoe really pops with the grey. It looks so good. So that is Joey's stable. Then over here, we have the tack room, soon to be the new feed room. So don't worry, I'm going to film the whole process of um, changing all that up inside. That's why I'm not going to show you inside because that is going to be coming soon. And then lastly, we come to the feed room that's going to be the new tack room. So I am so excited for changing everything up in there again. It's it's going to be a lot of work for me, a lot of DIY, but it's definitely going to be worth it in the end. Just like the stables look now, they look so different, but I love it. Um, also, I have put the black horseshoes on here, which um, matches all the metal work. I just think it looks so cute. So anyway, guys, that pretty much is the tour of the stables, the big stable reveal. Let me know if you like it in the comments below because I was kind of nervous. I was like, I hope people don't just like suddenly really hate it and don't like what I've done. But I do think it makes it look like a brand new stable, like it's just been built rather than it being an old one that we've had for a good couple of years. So that concludes the end of the stable renovation series one. Series one for now, guys. Lots more exciting stuff coming this summer as I've already said, but before today's video ends, I'd just like to say another huge, huge thank you to all of you guys for watching my videos because you are the reason that the stables look like this. I really do hope that you guys like it because it has been a lot of work for myself. But anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Hey everybody, this is me and welcome back to another video. So for today, I thought I would, it's kind of like the sequel to the stable renovation series because obviously I need to do the inside of the stables or today the storage room. Um, so I've got all my warm gear on today because it's very early this morning. Um, we had a haylage delivery yesterday from Silvermore who I'm very lucky to be a sponsored rider for them so they very kindly gifted me a lot of haylage. This isn't all the haylage as well, we've got more around the corner that I'm gonna have to move. I've got my gloves on because it's a little bit damp because we had a frost last night, so I um, don't really wanna get wet hands. So uh, the plan for today is to start organizing everything. So as you guys know, the storage room is gonna kind of become the haylage and shavings room. I'm gonna have all of my hay nets in there so I can make all my like hay and haylage nets, that kind of thing. Um, but anyway, the plan is to move all of this in there. We've got pallets in there so that can sit on that, which should be nice. Um, but I'm gonna see how we're gonna organize this because it might take a few bits of moving around to get it how I want because there's quite a lot here so uh, let's get started nothing out there could ever stop me from chasing after the way you la 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 love me keeping me up two cups of coffee baby you make me feel so la 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 lovely I keep on wanting no I should have wanted a All 
right guys, welcome to my wall of Silvermore Haylage. Um, so yeah, there's quite a lot in here. My arms were definitely aching after I put this all here. It is a new day now. Um, it's a nice and rainy day, so I thought today will be the day that I get this storage room sorted because there is a lot to do. The wall behind you guys right now, um, I have a lot of storage boxes, like this one here. You guys know I love my storage boxes. This isn't a sponsor or anything like that, but um, I'm really excited about these ones. Not only are they grey, but these are made of, I think it's like 95% or almost all of it is made of um, recycled plastic. So in the UK, we have two different rubbish bins. We have one for your general household waste, and then there's one for like recycling. So all of your plastic recycling, it's pretty cool, has been made into this box. So it's really durable. And the plan is to put lots of storage stuff in here, mainly I'm thinking like horse rugs, because obviously um, I've been given quite a few new horse rugs lately, which I'll show you guys in a sec. Um, but I'm thinking this could be like the rug wall because I can put all my rugs in here. I can label the boxes, have everything organized. So I can have like fly rugs, the donkeys rugs, that kind of thing. So I've got to um, make a whole sort of storage unit today. That might take a little while. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna be crouching down doing some building usually you guys know I wear my wellies for absolutely everything but right now I thought you know what I'm gonna put trainers on today I'm gonna to be inside if I look a bit damp it's because I have been out in the rain you know it's a rainy day let's build some shelves so uh, that is the plan I will see you guys when I move all the shelving in Wee! oh my gosh that's way too <laughs> so much okay so around me here I have a lot of boxes not just the plastic ones in these cardboard boxes I have a lot of little metal pieces like this. So um, all the years of doing Lego as a kid, I have put into training because today I'm gonna be following some instructions and hopefully building some storage units. So here is some footage, never seen before on the channel, of me doing some building. <laughs> unit complete which is very exciting um, but yeah no it was a little bit fiddly to start with but as soon as I'd done like a few of them I really got the knack of it like a few of these like things I had to bend to get it in nicely so um, once I figured out how to do that um, I actually built this quite swiftly um, I decided because obviously the different levels you can choose where you want them and I used the box to sort of measure out how I wanted it I could have had it a little bit lower down so I had more space at the top but I thought you know what when I have these boxes I want it to be practical for myself because I quite like when I have a storage box like this to have a little bit of room here so I can do like a little sneaky peek so when I open it up I just have that room to lift the lid so I can have a little look inside quickly grab it rather than having to take the whole box off if that makes sense um, so it does mean we don't have as much space at the top but I thought we can still fit a box on the top I just haven't put the bar across here um, because I could have put the bar across and I could have put the extra um, panel on top but it would have meant that the box was all the way up here and I don't really know what I would have put there anyway and I don't need that much storage. I need a lot of storage but not quite that much. Um, but anyway, now I have finished this one. I have two others to make because I had to order them in three. Well, you can order one or you can order three. You couldn't order two. So I thought, you know what? We'll go for the three. Well, I will definitely make sure that I have enough and hopefully if my measurements are correct then three will perfectly fit along this wall because I measured it and everything but yeah now it's time to build the other two <laughs> We now have three storage units, shelving units. Pretty proud of that, building them. Um, the only problem I have is, or not really problem, I'm glad it fits. Thing is, um, there's a little, little gap here that I can shimmy into, and there's a little gap 
here <laughs> I can shimmy into. Um, so I was wondering, do I have them all pushed up against that wall, all pushed up against that wall so there's no gap, or do I just have this one perfectly in the center and then I have a bit of space for if I want to move things around, I might have something long that might go across. I don't know, we will see. I think for now I'll put it like this, but if I take it over to the wash bay, I will show you all of the storage boxes we have because there's like a wall of them because there are quite a few. <laughs> So yes, here are all the storage boxes. This is currently in the wash bay, don't worry. That's gonna be a whole nother video probably sorting out in here because there's a lot to do, a lot of painting. We have some swatches here. Um, but yeah, no, I'm actually really excited because the label peels off perfectly. I feel like that's one thing that really annoys me is when you have labels and you try to peel them off and then you have the sticky bit or bits that don't come off. So I'm gonna try and peel this one off. Prove it wasn't luck. Oh yes, that is peeled off so satisfyingly. Um, so no, the plan is to put these all in the storage unit. So I'll see you guys once I've done that. Baby, you make me feel so lovely. So that is all the storage boxes in the storage shelves or units. That is looking pretty good. Obviously, we had two extra that I put at the top. I don't know if I want to put other things in the top here. Obviously, I've got a lot of space here as well, but we will see. But I think the next thing I need to do is get all the rugs, put them in here. I actually have a few th things from my tack rooms, such as like Casper and Joey's boots. I might put in a box because I do have a boot box at the moment and it's sort of overflowing. So um, this might be the overflowing storage area. I'm not sure, obviously when we do do the um, new tack room, I'll have a lot more space and so maybe a few things I'll move into there. Once that's done, I don't know, I'm gonna play around, see what I like. But yeah, there's gonna be a lot of rugs that I need to put away now. <laughs> All right guys, it's now another day. Yes, it's one of those videos where it's a bit of a process. It takes a little bit of a while. Um, but down here, I have multiple boxes of different things. Cause I feel like for now, um, the storeroom is gonna kind of be part overflow tack room. Cause my tack room, as you guys know, we're changing it to a bigger one soon. Um, but it's, it's overflowing just a little bit. So uh, for example, here I have a massive storage box. This is one of my old ones that, um, isn't as good a quality so I'm glad I got these durable ones um, full of my boots for the horses and that is overflowing a little bit I have all of my beautiful new rugs from high equestrian this one's out of the packaging I don't know if I want to like fold them up all neatly put them in their little bags I probably should I feel like that'd be really good for organization but it might take me a little while but look this is look how cute Casper's is it's got little merry-go-rounds on so anyway it's gonna be a lot of rug organization because obviously this is mainly where I'm gonna be putting my rugs I also <laughs> Lemia very kindly have sent me loads of these polo wraps I don't use polo wraps that often because I'm more of a show jumper. I feel like now I'm going to be doing a little bit more dressage, they will come in handy. Um, but we needed them for the Pony Mag photo shoot for certain things, um, so that was really good fun. Um, but no, so I think I'm going to use one of the storage boxes to put all of that in. So there's a lot here. For example, I've got fly masks as well, so there's going to be like a fly mask and fly rug box. But um, I'm just deciding right now what box is going to be what and what's going to go where. <laughs> All right, so I think I'm gonna put the polo wraps away first, just because there's quite a few of them and I feel like once they're out of the way, I'll have a bit more of space to move around and put things away. So I think the plan is I'm gonna put them down at the bottom because I won't be using them all the time. It's just a place that's gonna be quite easy to remember where they are. If I can unclip this. There we go. I know how to do that now. But no, these, these are gonna fit in so perfectly. Like, look how clean these white ones are. So fancy, okay. Hopefully these will all fit in so nicely because they've got their little boxes, so, or oh, their little bags. Oh, this is gonna look so good. And then I think these ones can, oh my goodness, guys, you will not believe this. They all fit perfectly in. That looks so satisfying. Okay, that is the Polo Wraps box. Pop that away. I am gonna have to remember where everything goes, but quite exciting, I have a label maker and I have different colors for the label maker as well so I'm gonna label everything up hopefully color coordinate them for the horses sort of colors kind of thing um, but then I will really be able to see read it on the box that's what's where easy 
Okay, one box done. Many more to go. I feel like this is the most satisfying part is just organizing everything. Having like an actual place for things to go is making me very excited. But now I'm gonna be organizing all of my boots. I might have to split my box into two. So have a boots, have a box for matchy boots and just sort of like plain work boots. I don't know, we'll see how it goes because that box is already overflowing a little bit. So definitely don't have a problem. Um, but anyway, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I quite like to wrap the big back boots within the like smaller front boots because then like, when I put my boots on, I feel like this is a really odd way to do it. Instead of doing both front boots and then both back boots, I like to do the left side and then the right side. I just find it easier if I have to like keep going around the horse and back around again. I don't know my kind of way of doing it. These boots are also a little bit dirty, so I should probably give them a clean at some point, but for now, they can go in the storage box. So I'm gonna try and match things up. So yeah, this is how normal people do it. They wrap the smaller boots in the small one and the big one in the big one, but I don't know. I just find it easier, personally. So I have ice blue. Uh, I feel like ink blue could probably go in the more neutrals box because it's navy. I feel like that can go with a lot of different outfits rather than just one, like the chili red. So chili red can go in here. What else do we have? This is just like my boot collection, guys. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's like the more normal way of doing it. We have azure. Um, I can go next to the ice blue. That looks quite satisfying with the blues next to each other. Sage, where is the other sage? Hello. It's fine, we can do, we can do Benetton blue. I don't know where that other sage boot has gone, but that's fine. We have hunter green. What else do we have in here? Oh, there's the other sage. Nice. Can go there. I have my fluffy mulberry ones. Oh, these boxes are so, feel so much bigger because this is fitting in so nicely. Oh, I reckon I can fit all my boots in here. I'll just put the more neutral ones at the top because they're the ones I probably use the most often. Ink blue. And then I have my big collection of overreach boots or bell boots because uh, Joey over here, he, he quite likes to um, you know, just cut himself in the field. So he, he can be a little bit wild sometimes and excited when they're all running around. And with his baby Bambi legs, where is the lid? Oh, the lid's over here. He does like to go a little wild sometimes. So um, just protects him from doing something stupid. All right, boot box complete. That can go next to polo wraps. That seems like a good place. And there we go. All right, so now it's time to go on to rug organization, which I feel like is gonna be a little bit more tricky because I'm still deciding, do I organize the rugs by like fly rugs, New Zealand's, like thick winter rugs, or do I do it by horse? And I feel like by horse is gonna be a little bit easier because then I can be like, ah, Mickey's is that one, Joey's is that one, Casper's is that one. However, Joey and Casper, they have the exact same size rug. So here is their fly rugs and they're both six foot three and they both have zebra ones. So I feel like it's probably gonna be better to organize them by horse because even though like, yeah, Casper could wear Joey's just for like hygiene reasons, I feel like it's nicer for like a horse to have their own rug and maybe not share with others. I don't know. So I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna try, maybe do like each level a horse or actually we've got one, two, three, so we could do Joey, Casper, Mickey. So I think I'm gonna put Mickey this side just because um, he isn't, he, he's a bit more feral. He isn't rugged as often and he doesn't have a big selection of rugs like Casper and Joey because obviously Casper and Joey go out in the van a lot. They have their travel rugs and that sort of thing. So this can be Mickey's fly rug. Doo -doo -doo. Six foot three, that's not Mickey. Five foot three, Mickey, yay. Okay, so in there I'm gonna put his fly rug. Also gonna put his um, fly mask as well, so you'd find that. Here's Mickey's little high equestrian zebra fly mask and how cute it is, look how small the ears are. It's so tiny. Mickey has definitely um, had a good roll in it already, as you can see. I don't know why, but whenever Mickey rolls, he really loves to rub as much dirt into his face as possible. I don't know if that's just a Mickey thing or if anybody else's horses do that, but yep. That probably needs a wash already, but you know what? I think Mickey quite quite likes the dirty, dirty zebra kind of style, but anyway, that can go in there. That is Mickey's fly stuff complete. Mm, yeah, that can go in there for now because it's nearer the door and it's now summer, so that makes sense. But I'm gonna put Mickey's winter rugs and like New Zealand's, that kind of thing. That can go in this one. So I'll probably do that next. I'll probably organize it by horse. 
I've also just found while I was rummaging around in the rug box, Mickey actually has a spare fly mask, which is probably needed because um, knowing Mickey, he likes to roll, he likes to take them off. Um, so if it's a rainy day and he gets it in a muddy puddle, then it's good that he has a spare because if not, he probably wouldn't want a wet muddy fly mask to go back on his head. So I'm going to quickly put that into the fly mask or Mickey's fly, fly box. That's probably what I'm going to call it, Mickey's fly box. That sounds so strange, but I'll know what, I, I'll know what I'm going on about so that can go. Ooh, let's not get caught. Go nicely in there. Okay, where is Mickey's New Zealand? All right, so I feel like this video is going to kind of become a rug haul because obviously um, High Equestrian are a new sponsor to the channel and they have sent me a lot of new rugs which I'm very grateful for but look how cute this one is. This is the competition ready one and it has like cute little horses doing a venting on and it's in green and I feel like this is going to look so cute on Mickey. Obviously I haven't used this yet because I want to keep it clean because we need to get some really cute photos of Mickey in it and I know that as soon as I put him out in the field in this it's, it's gonna be brown. He's gonna roll in the muddiest patch. So anyway, this is gonna be Mickey's more like wet weather rugs. So that's all good for now. Obviously, I think they'll very kindly send me some um, like heavier fill rugs for the winter in their new winter collection and things. But for now, Mickey is all sorted with his summer rug. So I think next we're gonna go on to Casper. Now at the moment, Casper has a little bit more than Joey, I believe. And that's because for the Pony Mag photo shoot, we needed to do lots of different like rug outfits. Um, so right now, Casper obviously doesn't need a thick, heavy, stable rug, but he has got one, which is great. And um, he will definitely be using that in the winter when it gets colder. <gasps> I just found a little, one of, the, one of the labels that must have not been peeled off correctly. So um, this can take me a little while to probably organize everything, put all the rugs away. So um, I'll see you guys when all the rugs are in their boxes. Love it, how you love me electric, like you do. Love it, how you love me electric, always you. Love it, how you love me electric, electric I Love it, how you love me a lot, love me a lot, love me electric. Baby, keep the light on for me, I'm coming home. Now I got you forever, wherever I go. another day but you know what I think this might be the last day of the storage renovation sort of project because here I have da -da -da -da, my label maker which is very exciting um did I buy lots of different colored labels just for today's video maybe um so here where is it we've got well we've got lots of different ones we've got like blue with little spots on so I think that'd be cute for Mickey we've got a green one for Joey where's the purple one? Oh, is the purple one in here is it in here? Oh, the purple one is in here. I am prepared. So, um, I'm gonna give it a little try out. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do Casper fly rugs first. So, fly rugs. All right, here we go. Stick it on there. Beautiful. Beep, 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 beep. Waiting for it to print. Another one printing. Um, so yeah, I feel like I've sort of gone back to the 90s, not that I was ever alive in the 90s um, because I was born in 2001, but um, no, this is old school, but I'm actually really enjoying it. This is quite fun. It's just the little things in life I get excited by and this is definitely one of them. Oh my goodness, guys, how satisfying does this look? Because obviously you guys are probably thinking, oh my gosh, she's just gone for grey boxes, how boring, but no. 
I've color coordinated them with my labels. I've jazzed them up a little bit. Um, but no, it's so satisfying. It's gonna be so much easier to find my rugs. Be like, this is his fly rugs, stable rugs, travel rugs, and turnout rugs. Um, so that. That just looks so cool. Now it's time to do Mickey's next. So Mickey's, I have this really cute one. It has, it's sort of like a, yeah, a tealy blue with little um, white spots on, on polka dots. And yeah, time to do Mickey's. Oh, it looks so good for Mickey in this color. There we go. Oh, it looks so good. Mickey's labels are now all done and they look so cute. I decided because Mickey doesn't really travel that much, instead of calling it his travel rug, I'd call it his cooler or I put cooler rug because I put rug at the end of all of them. I just thought it looked nicer. Um, but yeah, because like it's good to use a Mickey maybe after he's had a bath or something like that to dry him off, but he doesn't really travel that much. So I thought it'd make better sense to call it a cooler. But now it's time to do Joey. We have the green tape all set in there, ready to go. So what should I do first? Joey fly rug? Let's go for it. There we go, guys. The storeroom slash overflow tack room is complete for now. Um, I think it's looking so smart. Obviously, I could have gone for um, transparent or clear boxes so I could see what's inside, but I think with them being grey, it looks a lot more smarter, a lot more organised, and with the labels, I can really easily tell what's inside, what's box. Hopefully, it will stay that organised and I won't accidentally put the wrong rugs in the wrong boxes, but um, I'm sure there'll be some spring cleaning videos where I have to sort this out all over again. Um, but anyway, guys, I am so excited because we haven't quite finished yet because next door we have the wash bay. Now I've been busy painting in there, organizing all of my different like grooming products, that kind of thing. So that is gonna be a whole separate video coming very soon to you guys. Also recently I've been doing lots of filming here, there and everywhere, more challenge esmes and things coming soon. Um, but anyway guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Hello everybody, this is me and welcome to another episode of the Stable Renovation Series. It's kind of series or season two now, episode two. If you guys haven't seen it already, then be sure to check out my storage room slash overflow tack room um, video. I'll leave a little eye card to that because I had so much fun organizing all of my rugs and things. But today is the day that we're finally gonna sort out the wash bay. Now we've had this for a few weeks now. Have I used it once? No, because um, it needs a lot of sorting out, you know. At the moment, it's just sort of an empty stable that's going to be a wash bay. So I am back in my barn potato outfit. Yes, because we're gonna be doing more painting. I thought, you know what? That's gonna be the end of painting. I'm done now, but no, we have got even more. So I'm gonna take you guys inside and show you my paint samples. <laughs> All right, so to save money, these are actually the paint samples from the Wall of Indecision back in the first episode. So we have this one that's a little bit more navy and I thought, you know what, wash bay, water, maybe a bit of blue in there could look nice. Or we have the very dark gray. And it's wild to think that I almost painted the stables this color and then I was like, no, I want something a little bit lighter. So I think we're gonna go for the dark gray. Cause I feel like this is a very like British thing or something a lot of people in the UK do is the plan is to paint the bottom half in the really dark gray. I feel like most people do it in black though, but me, it's got, it's got to be dark grey, you know, a little bit different. And then the top is going to be in white. Well, it looks white. The actual colour is light grey, but we it looks like white on the rest of the stables. So it's going to be light at the top, so it's nice and airy, but then dark on the bottom, so it's practical, because I'm going to be washing some very muddy and pooey ponies in here. Um, so that is the plan, going for this colour. I have all my paint here, ready to go. Um, paint brushes, that kind of thing. So yeah, I think we're gonna start off by doing some painting. Obviously this is waterproof paint. Um, this is the paint that we would have used on the outside because um, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of water spraying everywhere. Also, if we go over here, I will show you. Do, 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 do. This is where the horse shower is going to go, as you guys know. Um, so yeah, most of my friends spend their money buying cute things. What do I spend my money buying? A horse shower or a shower from a horse. It is just like a normal shower, but obviously Horses can use normal showers, right? It means that they can have nice warm water. We also have a hose pipe there, so that's all fun. 
on this wall here. Now this is where things are gonna get a bit more exciting because you guys know I love my organization. So the plan is to have like a wall with shelves of my lotions and potions, all of that blue shampoo because gray horses. Um, so anyway, I think the first thing we need to do, get painting. I used to get sad when you get under my skin But I guess I kinda grew out of dancing around it Closed my door so you can't get in Doing better than I've ever been I'm putting on my makeup Take another shot of all the good stuff Shining when I wake up I, 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 I don't get talking Forgetting you like nobody is watching finished doing all of the whites on the walls it looks so good we've done two coats as well which was definitely needed but it's actually looking a lot more light gray the actual name of the paint but you know what I'm really liking it. I think it looks really good so next we need to paint the dark gray on the bottom hopefully I'm gonna try and get all the painting done in one day we will see though but we have the tape here which we're gonna take off and oh my goodness how satisfying is this? Are you ready? Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. Wow, look at that. Pulling it back. Pulling it back. Oh, that is a clean line. Oh, don't knock over the paint. Goodness me. There we go. Okay, so that's sort of like, oh my gosh, the tape is getting stuck to my gloves. I might need to get some, oh no, it's okay, it's all off. Um, so that was like a practice line, because obviously it's a little bit lower than the top because we want the line to be dead on with this wall here. So we don't, did a practice one, obviously made it a bit lower because then when we put the tape on, it's gonna go like here. So this is just like a little extra inch that we painted just in case. But no, I think it's gonna look really good and really smart. So yeah, and time to, where is the tape? I need to get the tape and put another line on because if not, it's not gonna look good if it's a wonky line. <laughs> okay, I have the volcanic ash paint, AKA the dark gray paint, but that's its fancy name or like, it's kind of like its show name. But um, anyway, I'm going to paint the back wall now. I feel like this is gonna make the most difference. Like it's gonna be like, wow, okay, they've painted the inside, if you know what I mean. It's gonna be very different to the board that we have um, how it is. So, first stroke, are you ready? Ooh, nice. It's looking good, look at that. With this dark gray, it's a lot easier to paint on here. With the white, obviously, there was the writing on the other side that I had to go over a few times. And I don't know, I feel like the dark gray, this dark gray paint, because obviously it's a, got little bits in there's like little holes that you have to be really careful of trying to fill them so then it actually looks like you painted it rather than you've missed those little patches but no it's looking good i will see you guys when i have finished doing this because again it's probably going to take me a good couple of hours to do this again love to watch you hate me because i'm stronger make a picture it i last you longer yeah i've been living sky high Oh my goodness, guys, it is looking so good. I am really excited. Obviously, this is only the first coat, but it's actually looking really good just for the first coat as well. I've actually managed to find like a little knack that helps a lot with this board, because obviously there's lots of little grooves if, that you have to try and get into. It feels illegal to do this, because obviously with painting, it's all very up and down in one direction. But if you do a little bit of crisscross like that, you can see it gets in all the grooves really well so I have been firing along this wall getting it painted so I'll see you guys with the end product I think by the time I've done this yeah sorry this is very addicting painting I at first I was like oh no I've done way too much painting recently but actually this is very satisfying I'm, I'm having a whale of time I can't you can't stop me I'm going zoom zoom
It's a new day and here is the big reveal. It's now all dried. I've done a few little finishing touches as well, such as making sure the line is nice and straight. Any of the bits that I missed out were all painted. But yeah, two coats and it looks absolutely beautiful. It looks so smart and professional. But anyway, the next bit you guys are gonna absolutely love because I have all of my lotions and potions, my shampoos and sprays. And um, the plan is the wall behind you right now, I'm going to just fill with all of them and they're gonna be on the shelving unit. So the plan is we're gonna make like a little bar that goes across, because obviously there's like a little bit of a shelf here that I can put the lotions and potions on. But I want to make sure that if there's a horse in here, it's not gonna knock them all down. They're not gonna go flying because you guys know Mickey. If Mickey's in here, then it's gonna be a little bit chaotic. And they're all out there at the moment now. You might be able to see in the window, grazing in the field. But yeah, I need to grab out my saw. I've got some wood. Time to make a little shelf. All right, so here we go. This is my, probably the easiest sort of shelf I've ever built. It's pretty much just a plank of wood strapped to a bit of wall because obviously kind of already got the shelf as well. This is just a bit of, a bit here. So as you can see, it's the products aren't gonna be flying off. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys when the whole wall is filled with my lotions and potions. <laughs> How cool does this wall look? As you can tell, I have quite a few <laughs> lotions and potions. I thought I'd do a quick little tour of some of the products. Um, so I'd like to say a huge thank you to Supreme Products. They very kindly gifted me quite a few items. So here I've got some of their black hoof gloss, which I feel like on Joey's hooves is gonna look amazing. Then I just have some regular hoof stuff, um, highlighter, mane and tail shampoo and conditioner. I've got some stain remover. Now this stuff I'm quite excited to use. We have some white cover. So I think you spray it on. So if Casper, for example, had like a stable stain, I tried to wash it off and sometimes there's just like a little yellowy patch there. This is kind of like horse foundation so you can spray it on him. So hopefully that'll make him clean. There's also a sparkle one, I've got a Lemieux one. Um, purple spray in case the horses have any like cuts and things. Hot oil, um, detangler, moisture and condition, easy plat. Uh, here I have some baby oil, that's always good. Some baby shampoo, uh, talcum powder, some muddy buddy powder, um, fly spray, some more shampoo. We have lavender and a conditioning shampoo, which is very cool. We have some coat gloss. We have some stain remover shampoo that is definitely going to be used a lot. We have some blue shampoo. I've got some Lemieux slosh. Here I have a tack cleaner and a synthetic tack cleaner. I actually have the labels on the back, but I peeled off the labels in the front because it looks a lot more aesthetic without like different colored labels because everything in here is very much like black, white and gray. So I just think it looks really nice. Um, on this one here, I am, am going to need to use some nail polish remover. This is like a little life hack I have. If you ever have a label on something and you peel it off, and it looks all horrible and sticky like this. Nail polish remover is really good at getting the sticky off. So I'm gonna do that. These sprays are just gonna be useful for if I'm about to like go and do some filming work with one of the horses. And for example, Joey's tendon boots are a bit muddy. If you grab a bit of the synthetic like tack cleaner, do a couple sprays, wipe it off. It just gets all the mud and sand off quite easily. Uh, I have some hippy scrub. I have some fly spray, but this is actually like a fly gel. So Casper, who's a little bit more sensitive on his face, I can put that on. On. And then we have some leg and body whitener, which I'm very excited to use as well because I have greys that like to be muddy. Um, so that is my quick whistle stop tour of all of the products. Some things I haven't used that yet, as I've said before, which I'm very excited to. So I think I'll have to do like an updated grey horse grooming routine in here at some point because yeah, I am very excited with all these lotions and potions. I don't know where to begin, but there's a lot and I'm excited. <laughs> Okay guys, I have a really exciting box here. Now you might be thinking, Esme, what can you get so excited for? I have bought myself a shower. Now you might be wondering, Esme, why are you getting so excited about a shower? Now this shower just isn't any shower. 
it will produce hot water. We're gonna have it hooked up on the wall here. Um, I do need to make a little box for it though, because obviously your shower at home needs water and it needs electricity. Um, so we're gonna have a nice little box to cover that up. You guys probably have nice pretty tiles in your house. We're not quite going that far. I think that would be a bit ridiculous to have like it, the whole washroom like decked out in tiles just for the horses. But a bit of paint, makes it look a lot prettier. But no, we're gonna have it up on the wall here. It means in the winter, they have nice warm water for me to wash them down when they get filthy. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd do a little shower haul, which is very exciting, because unlike a hose pipe, we're gonna have like, uh, wait, that's not it. We're gonna have like a proper shower head. Like how cool is that? I'm gonna feel like I'm in like Nintendogs when you have like a little shower head washing, washing the horse. Also, I have ordered an extra long um well i was gonna call it a hose pipe but um this is four meters long so um if joey decides to have a little boogie woogie moving around when i try to wash him i have no excuse for missing any spots so hopefully when i wash the horses they will be absolutely spotless afterwards i have no excuse now but yeah this is this is so long guys so long oh my goodness so anyway i will see you guys once i've made the beautiful box for my shower <laughs> Okay, so here we have it. The board is up. Are we gonna have to take it down at some point? Yes, because we need to get the electrics and water in, but I thought, you know what? Get it up, make sure it fits. Give, I'm gonna paint it now as well. There are a bit of dirty bits on, so I might need to give that a bit of a wipe off. Um, as you can see, this isn't actually the old bit of ply, like a extra spare bit we had when we did the tack room. Like maybe two years ago now, like ages ago, we put some boards up to make it look fancy. Um, but yeah, we're back with the board again. Uh, so it's got a few poos on it since then. Um, so now I'm gonna paint it, obviously in the same light gray as on the top here, but I've gotta be really careful because I'm wearing my new merch and I'm too lazy to go and get changed and to put gloves on. We only have a tiny bit of paint left. It's like the smallest piece. So I'm gonna be as careful as I can because I really don't wanna get paint on myself. Um, but yeah, I'm just really not wanting to live the bomb potato life again. Last time I was like, I'm done with this bomb potato life, but obviously not quite yet. But um, here we go, nice and careful. Get it on, oh, this, this board is so nice to paint compared to with um, some of the bits I've had to paint already. Well, I was gonna say in this series, but like for example, when I was painting the inside of the horse's stable doors, that, I don't know what the wood was like, but it really like just, sucked up all the paint really um it just yeah but yeah some of the really rough edges that i've had to paint um haven't been the easiest but this a nice smooth board so much nicer oh my goodness it's just so smooth It's a new day and here we have it, the horse shower. It's all in, it's looking so cool. It feels like a proper almost like bathroom in here now, which is very snazzy. But look, look how long it is. I can go all the way over here. So if Joey's standing here, you know, give his mane a bit of a wash, even like get up to his head. That's like the perfect length. Look, it goes all the way along. Okay, I need to put this back. Zoom. Like that, and then hang it on. Ta-da! I mean, I could almost have a shower in here. Oh, goodness, okay. Need to sort that out. There we go, is that about the right placement? Yeah. Stand under it, <laughs> it'll be nice warm water, I guess. But um, I think I'll use my shower in the house. Uh, but no, that's what we've got so far. I think the next thing we need to do is have a bit of a tidy up and have a bit of a clear up in here because everything is all over the place. We have the drill, we have, plumbing parts. Uh, it's a bit of a mess, so I need to tidy this up because we've actually got some matting, which will be really nice for um, when I'm washing the horses. 
they can stand on the mat rather than this concrete. I feel like it would just be easier to sweep and clean, especially if they decide to do a poo in here. Um, so yeah, the plan is to take everything out, put the matting in. We also need to put some cross ties in for them to stand there. And also I want to put my grooming bags up in like a place. So I'm thinking maybe that corner with all the shampoos, I think that'll be a plan. So see you guys when I'm doing that. hanging up on my grooming totes. The donkeys actually have a new one and it matches their high equestrian rug, which is so cute, especially with the navy in the red. Um, but anyway, yeah, they're all hanging up. I might change them around. I don't know, because I was umming and ahhing about putting these up, because obviously this is a washroom. Don't particularly want them to get wet. They are waterproof, but I just thought it would be so easy just to dive in, grab a grooming brush, and then the horse is right there next to me. Um, so I might change it around, might not. We will see, depending on how wet they get. But again, they are waterproof, so it should be fine. Um, but here I have some stable chains, which I think I'm going to use for the cross ties. Hopefully they fit and everything is all good. So I need to... Um, Put up some bits and bobs to hang these up with, so yeah, more DIY. <laughs> cross ties I think and now complete obviously this is where the horse is gonna go I don't know if this needs to be tighter or looser obviously it sounds weird I've been equestrian for what since I was five so for years and years now me forgetting how old I am for over 15 years I've been an equestrian now and I have never used a horse in a cross ties before because I feel like it's such a like an American thing or if you have like a big barn in the UK you usually just like tie them up to a bit of baler twine on the side of a fence so this is very exciting but um, it's a little bit new to me obviously at big nice fancy yards they do have them um, so I have these like clickery bits that hopefully I'm going to put on the side of um, the horse's head collar. We do have some baler twine attached so then if they um, pull against it then it does have a quick release which is great for safety reasons but I think this will do. Obviously we have a bit of a thing here so hopefully they don't decide to just like walk forward and over. Um, we will see what it's like. I might have to do some adjustments and things but I think for now hopefully this is in the right place. <laughs> Here we have a saddle stand that I've just put up. I don't know how old this is, but it's pretty old. We've had this for ages. This is the old one that I used to use for Mickey's saddle, I believe, in our garage when we didn't even have a tack room. I just, you know, put my saddle in the garage as you do. Um, but no, here we have it. Uh, this is actually quite cool because if you lift it out, it can hang down. So if I'm not using my tack and just grooming the horses, I can groom them, not worry about the sticking out, but if I put it back up, it does mean I can get all my tack ready, put it in here, ready for when I'm about to ride or tack up in here. Um, but it's a little bit dirty, so I have some cleaning products. Because even just like me touching it and things, I've got like all oil and I don't know what on my fingers. So this needs a good clean because this has just been hanging around somewhere in our old like shed or something. Um, so yeah, let's get you all looking nice. Because obviously you do not want to put your nice Nice clean saddle on a dirty saddle stand. That is not good. I don't know why, but I chose to <laughs> chose my smallest sponge to clean this with. Oh gosh, and I've dropped it. But you know what? That's fine, Mr. Strawberry. You were a little bit dirty already, so it doesn't matter if you get a bit of oil on you. It is a little rusty in places, so I'm glad I'm giving it a good clean. It might need to oil some of the screws or something because it's a little old, but you know, we're recycling, good for the environment. All right, so I'm having a little think about where I want to put, um, I've got these like little bridle hooks, because obviously if I'm going to put my saddle here, it'd be quite nice to put my bridle here as well. Um, now I'm thinking, do I want to like, I've got my breastplate as well, gosh, everything's going to fall off. Um, do I want to like hang them here? I feel like that could be quite cute. Or I was going to put them in this back hall here, but then the screws will go through and that wouldn't be great. Like, oh gosh, okay, no, it's fine. It's not falling, don't fall. Okay. Um, or I was thinking I could put it here because obviously this wall is a bit thicker and the screws wouldn't go through but then it will get all tangled in this and I just feel like that wouldn't be great so I think I might have to put them on this back wall but then like obviously it's kind of annoying with the like saddle being in the way a bit but you know what I think here will probably be the best place. <laughs> The tacking up area is now complete. I think it looks so cute. I can't wait to like 
put my tack on here, maybe do like outfit of the day on my Instagram with like different colored saddle pads. I don't know, I felt like that could be really cute. Um, but no, it looks really good with my breastplate and then my bridle. And then if I don't need it as a tacking up area, I could always hang like my lead rope on here because obviously in the cross ties, the horses won't need a lead rope on them. So, you know, multi-purpose. Um, the next thing I need to do is a little bit of plumbing because at the moment we have a blue pipe in the corner. So yeah, that really needs doing because you can't really have a wash bay without water. All right, so here I have the beautiful blue pipe. I have just realized how absolutely filthy my fingers are, but we move on. So the plan for today is to do a little bit of this as me plumbing. Now plumbing, pretty happy with doing for this, you know, it's not too difficult. Um, I'm just gonna put a tap on here for the meantime. So we're gonna have cold water because we need to get an electrician out because this is me plumbing, that's fine. This is me electrician, I think somebody's gonna die in the process and that would not be good. Um, so we are gonna have electrician come out at some point, I think in August. So we won't have warm water until August, but luckily, you know, it's the spring summer. Hopefully we shouldn't need that. England, we do not need warm water. Please give us some sun. Um, but no, the plan is put a tap on there. But before I do that, we're gonna have to um, turn off the mains water, um, which is about half a mile away because, you know, the water for that is also the water for all of the water troughs, for the tap of my tap room, the tap in the yard. Um, so I will be back with you guys <laughs> once I've done that. I thought I'd show you guys the beautiful spring flowers we have out at the moment on the side of the road. Um, I have made sure that I'm going to be turning off the correct water because I don't particularly want to turn off the water to our house. If not, my family are going to be a bit confused when no water comes out of taps. Um, but here we go. I am diving in and hopefully I can reach it. It's quite low down. And turn off the tap. <laughs> it's a bit stiff. <laughs> I'm getting all, all the grass up my nose. Don't mind me, just doing a bit of plumbing. I will see you guys when the plumbing is complete. <laughs> we now have a tap. Now, please do not judge. This is temporary. This is a temporary solution. It's not gonna be here forever. We're just waiting for the electrician. So um, we do have water now, which is great. So I might put a hose pipe on there for the time being. But look guys, do, 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 we have water. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off so we don't flood the, um, I was gonna call it the tack room then, the wash bay. I still can't get used to being like, oh yeah, I have a wash bay. This is just mind blowing. Like I'm just, wow, so cool. Anyway, so that is now done. So I will see you guys when it's time to put the mats in. All right, everybody. The temporary plumbing is now complete. We have a hose pipe, so we're gonna be using this for now, obviously. Still waiting for the electrician to come and connect this up so then we have warm water, but you know, it's spring, summer now, it's pretty warm. The horse will be fine with this. Um, but yeah, I think we are almost done with the wash bay. So as I said before, the ground or the floor is a little bit dirty, a lot of leaves and shavings and things and um, bits of sawdust. Um, is in here, so I'm gonna go and grab a broom, give it a bit of a sweep, and then it's time to put the mats in. Love to watch you hate me, cause I'm stronger. Take a picture if I last you longer. Yeah, I've been living sky high, ten feet taller. Yeah, I'm doing better than I've ever been. I'm putting on my makeup, taking another shot of all the good stuff. All right, guys, the floor is now in. That was exhausting because the mats are so heavy. They don't look like it, but they are. And then also having to like cut up the different pieces so they fit, getting it straight. I'm, I'm pooped. But now the wash bay is complete, I think it's time to go and grab Casper and see what he thinks to it. Because you know, he can be the demo pony. He can try it out and yeah, see if it all works. I might just lie here for five more minutes. It's quite nice. Come on, Gatsby. In you come. Hop, hop. Oh, you're looking out the window. Okay, let's see if I've done this properly. Yeah. It's all right, you don't need to be scared. It's, it's just a wash bay, okay. Excuse me, I'm just gonna Gonna clip you on here as well. 
You're good. You're good. You're okay. I know. It smells funny in here from the mats. Because they're new. Oh. I don't think Casper has ever been in a cross ties before. So I think he's just having a bit of a move around. Yeah. Got your lovely grooming kit here, Caspi. Let's see if I can find a nice brush. There we go, this one will do. Because you're lovely and dirty. You're lovely and dirty, hey? So far, so good. I think he likes it. I think he does feel like he's half asleep, but you know, shows he's nice and relaxed. I know you're a little dirty, or you're a little dirty up here. I'll be nice and gentle around your face. Yes. Oh, we've got a few little poop stains on there that don't seem to be coming out, but don't worry. We have, we have everything in here, Casper, to make you looking nice and white and bright again. Yes. I have no excuses now for you guys to be looking dirty. No excuses at all. So, um, I don't want to be seeing any comments saying that my horses are dirty because they probably still will be a little bit, but, um, you're looking cute, Casp. I think he likes it, guys. Oh my goodness, guys. How cool does the wash bay look? Especially with Casp in it now, you can really kind of picture what it's going to look like and things. Well, obviously, it's done now, but there are a few things I would love to add, such as electricity lights, maybe one day a solarium. We'll see, because they're pretty expensive. Um, but yeah, I am really happy with it, especially as a lot of it I did DIY myself. And again, I'd like to say a huge thank you to you guys, because you are the reason this whole project has been possible. By watching my videos, you're the reason I was able to afford to do all of this and it's literally like my dream come true so thank you guys i really appreciate it um so anyway thank you so much for watching today's video if you're new or have not done so already please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and i really do appreciate it and i'll see you all next time bye <laughs> but guys if you're still watching you'll know that we haven't quite finished yet, you know? We've got the tack room and the feed room to swap over, completely redo. So season three, watch out for that. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy, there's a treat. And you can have a treat as well, Kiki. Yes, okay. Mickey, you can only have one at a time. Calm down, okay? <laughs> Hello everybody, this is me and welcome back to uh, the stable renovation series. As you can see behind me, we have something new. Duke hasn't actually had a proper look at it yet. Um, so this is a new field shelter for the little boys. I, because they're in separate fields, I call these guys the little boys and then the big boys are in the other field, Joey and Casper. Okay, Mickey. You can have the treat. I know you're very excited and you can have the other one. Um, but anyway, today we are making Duke a new stable. So the plan is the current storeroom is going to be Duke's new stable. And um, we weren't quite expecting to be getting a fourth horse and with winter coming up, um, I when I set everything in there, I was expecting maybe next year to be taking everything out and making it into a stable. But um, as you guys know the story behind Duke, we fell in love with him while filming at World Horse Welfare and he needed a home, he needed to be rehomed. So it was put up in the field today. Mickey was absolutely wild. You're a wild beast, hey? Um, you wouldn't think he's 22. Um, so he was having a great time. And um, Duke joined in a little bit as well. He had a bit of a run around. But anyway, yeah, the plan is we're gonna be setting up Duke's stable over in the main yard because winter's coming up and he needs a bit of shelter and things. You know, these two have been doing great over the summer in the field. They've got the sort of, um, they have the trees for shade and things, but it rains a lot here in England, so I'm really happy that they have a nice field shelter to go under. So um, I think I'm going to have to stop the lick attacks from Mickey right now, and because um, it's going to be a big project setting up Duke's new stable because there's going to be a lot of moving things. But now it's time to show you what we're moving all the storeroom stuff into. Thank you. Oh my goodness, my arm. My arm is just, just your saliva. Why are you so obsessed? Like, what does my arm taste of? All right, guys, you might be a little bit confused of where I am right now because we've had a second field shelter added, but this is where all the storage things are gonna go in. So the haylage, maybe the rug racks, and also the shavings as well. Um, where we are is right in front of me is the yard or the new tack room, but this is where all the storage is gonna go. Now, the thing I'm thinking is, am I gonna have to paint both of these in gray? 
because I've had enough painting. <laughs> that might be a job for the spring. I don't know. We will see. Over there we have Duke and Mickey's stable, but um, thought I would orientate you guys so you have a little bit of a better idea where we are. So we're currently behind the stables. This is the new storage room. We've got some rubber mats down here that we're going to be using for Duke's new stable. Now, if you come with me around here, you will see that we're now here at the main yard. So if we go over here, you can see we have the new tack room behind me that's currently under construction. We also have the new feed room, again, work in progress. Then we have Joey's stable, my mucking out tools that I've accidentally left out. We have Mickey's stable, we have Casper's stable, and then down here, we're planning to make Duke's stable. So this is the current storage room that's next to the wash bay, and I kind of don't want to show you guys what's in here because it's a, it's just a bit messy, but that's fine. I haven't needed to tidy it up because I knew that I was, I was going to be doing this today. I'm going to be clearing it out and it's going to become a stable, hopefully by the end of today. I really don't want this to be a two day process, but um, let's have a look inside. Look what we've got to play around. I've also been quite clever and have left this to the day where we don't have too much shavings or haylage left, so I don't have to move much over. Also, with the new storeroom being at the back, it's gonna be easier just for like driving up and get everything up there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm gonna see you guys when hopefully I've moved a little bit more of the stuff in here outside. <laughs> Blimey, who needs to go to the gym when you can move haylage bales around? But um, I haven't put the shavings in because I've just realized I'm probably gonna use both of those bales of shavings for Duke stables. So there's no point moving them all the way up here and then all the way back again. But um, that's pretty much the haylage sector of the new shed complete. I think the next plan is to move all of my rugs and my rug racks, rug, rug, that is such a mouthful. My rug racks into the corner over here. And I'll probably keep them in here for now. I don't know if I'll move them into the new tack room or feed room later, we'll see, but I think they'll, they'll fit in here quite well. Oh my goodness, it looks so different in here now. It feels so much more spacious without the um, haylage, the shavings and the pallets in here. Um, so it's starting to feel a little bit more like a stable. Obviously we still have some bits and bobs I need to put away, um, including all of my boxes full of rugs and all of my uh, racks to go with them. So that's gonna be quite a big task. So you know what, I'm gonna have a bit of a rest, but I also have something really exciting that's coming out soon that I really want to show you. So you guys will recognize this helmet, the This Is Me JS1 Pro that I released with Charles Owen about a year ago now, which is wild to think about. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to every single one of you that have got this helmet. It makes me so happy to know that you guys out there that are wearing this are wearing a really good, safe helmet. Um, I have actually unintentionally uh, tested this helmet out. Uh, last year, I had a fall on Joey where I landed on the arena fence that I have talked about in a previous video. And um, I have since replaced that. So uh, make sure you replace your helmet if you do have a fall and you hit your head. Um, but anyway, Super exciting is that I am coming out with a new helmet with Charles Owen. So here we have it. It's a little bit different. I've gone for different colorways. So we have the dark gray and I wanted to add like a, something a little bit different to make it a bit more exciting. So we have the rose gold detailing. Again, I went for more of a neutral color with the darker gray. So it will go with all of your different colorful outfits if you're like me and like to wear a lot of color. Or if you like to wear more plain outfits, it will go with that as well. Um, we have the matte grey hat silk that comes with it and also on the back is one of my favorite bits is it has the rose gold Charles Owen logo and then it also has my signature with a little kiss at the end as well so this helmet is actually at a bit of a different price point that you will now see when we have a little look inside so if you look inside it just looks like a normal helmet but if I take out the liner well one of the lo 
lovely features I love about both of these helmets is that the liner does come out so if you're like me and gets a little bit sweaty when you're riding you can pop this in the washing machine and you can actually buy an extra one so then you can have an extra one to have in the washing machine while you're riding in one so your head's always nice and fresh um, but anyway you will see that inside here it is bright and yellow and this is because with this helmet um, we've made it even safer we've added some MIPS technology so MIPS is this yellow part here this is a low friction material so what I do is if I give it a little bit of a wiggle you can see it moves and that's because usually when you fall off a horse um, you don't fall directly down on your head you actually fall at a bit of an angle and um, when you're falling at an angle it causes this rotational force which is really bad because um, it can cause your brain to move so um, what the MIPS technology does is it lessens the impact of the rotational force um, so the MIPS moves more so your brain moves less um, so I really wanted to add this into my new helmet because it's an added safety feature and I want you guys to be safer when you're riding um, and that's really important to me. So yeah, as I said before, if I put the liner back in um, and put it on your head, it is really nice and comfortable. You don't really notice it's there at all when you're riding. Also, to celebrate my new helmet, I thought I would do a giveaway with you guys. So all the information will be over on my Instagram page at this underscore Esme and all the information on how to enter will be in the giveaway post caption so good luck if you're entering um, which is very exciting but anyway um, now I've done this I thought I should probably carry on getting Duke stable ready because I think it's going to be quite a process <laughs> Satisfying. Does it look with all of the boxes in their correct places? I probably need to get four more because all of them are now full. Um, so that's something to put on the to-do list. But anyway, I also have a new stable guard. How cool is this? It's from my sponsors, High Equestrian. And it's got my logo on, it's got Casper's name. I do have one for each of the horses. I don't have one for Duke yet, so I might need to ask for them very nicely. But how cool is this? So instead of having the stable chain across, I can put the guard across. Look how posh this is, especially for when I'm like filming videos like Food Battle where they're all in their stables. I can put these up and they look so smart. Um, but anyway, now it's time to tackle Duke's new stable. There are a few bits left in there, probably just bits of old haylage that I need to sweep up and then it might be time to finally put the mats in. Duke stable is now empty, ready to put the mats in. The only last thing we have in here is this little scales. Um, so when this was the storage room where we'd make the haylage, um, I'd put the hay net on here and then I could see how much exactly I'm giving the horses. So it's time to take this down and get the mats in. gotta say they're quite comfy to have a little sit on um, so the last thing I need to do is put some shavings in here and also some hay as well I've just put the hook up so that's all ready um, but yeah it's looking pretty nice in here obviously um, Duke isn't used to being in a stable he's from World Health Welfare where he's used to just being out on the field so we've carried on doing that obviously he's been out on the um, hard standing on the yard quite a few times so what we're gonna do is to ease him into it we're at night going to put him on the hard standing with access to the stable so if you want to do he can come in he can have a lie down, he can have a bit of food and things, um, but I don't want to shut him in because he can get quite nervous, it's not his favourite thing, so we want to make it a nice positive experience and take baby steps with him to get him used to being in a stable. Um, but anyway, that is the plan. Um, very excited to see what he thinks. I might just give him a bit of um, bucket dinner to uh, entice him in and make it really nice for him. But anyway, time to get this place decked out with some shavings. Duke Stable is 
is now almost complete. He's got his haylage. He's got a massive shavings bed, probably a little bit too big for him, but you know what? I want to make it nice and cozy for him. And he's also got his water as well. And the last thing we need to do is put up his stable nameplate. So I actually made this at the Windsor Hall Show thanks to the Profiles range who very kindly taught me how to make it. I had so much fun. But anyway, now it's time to put it up. Now I was thinking all the other horses have their nameplates on their stable doors, but they have their stable doors closed and Dukes is probably gonna be open for quite a while. So I think the plan is to maybe put it here so then it's um, kind of in the same area just not on the door and then everyone can see it I think it's really cute I also need to do like a yellow horseshoe for him as well so might need to do that in another video but yeah I think I think he will look nice it's now up let's go and grab Duke get his head collar lead him in make it a happy and positive experience and see what he thinks all right Duke you excited to see your first ever stable of your very own yeah I've got lots of lovely food in here. It's gonna be great. Okay, up you come. Up, up. There we go. Straight to the yellow bucket, of course. So far, so good, guys. It looks like he's really enjoying his dinner. I do still need to take his head collar off before I make sure all the horses are good to go to bed and things. But yeah, we have done a lot today. We've cleared out the storeroom, put it in the new storeroom, set up Duke's new stable and introduced him to, you know, the stable life as well. Obviously, again, he's going to be free range, but hopefully he's going to love it. But before today's video ends, I'd just like to, you know, say thank you again to everybody who's purchased my This Is Me JS1 Pro. I'm so excited for you guys that are going to be getting my new helmet. Um, also, at the end of today's video, I will put a little video at the end that explains MIPS a little bit better and, and in more scientific terms compared to myself. But yeah, thank you so much, everybody for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe as it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs> oh, what a cutie. He is wolfing down that dinner. Welcome back to the stable renovation series. Today, yes, we're tackling the tack room again. Um, we've actually made quite a few different changes that I'm gonna show you in a second to in here. Um, but at the moment, over the last few weeks, all we've had the electrician in, putting in all the electrics. It's kind of been used as a, I don't know where this goes, I'm gonna dump it in here room. So uh, there's quite a lot of different bits and bobs in there that I do need to tidy out and remove because today we're gonna be painting the sort of brickwork around the bottom and also the floor as well. It already has garage floor paint on at the moment, but there are some bits where it's worn away and I thought, you know what? New tack room, new floor. So that's gonna be really satisfying, but yeah. I'm gonna need to do some tidying and I kind of don't want to show you inside because it is really messy, um, but it is gonna be satisfying once everything is taken out. So here is the mess. Luckily, if you saw my last um, stable renovation series video where we did Duke's new stable, you'll know that we now have an extra little storage bit around the back. So hopefully a lot of this stuff that's currently in here as storage can go in the new storage room. For example, I've got Casper's rug here where it got a little bit warm the other day and I took it off him that I just dumped in here when I really should have put it in the new rug racks. Um, but yeah, that is the plan and I'll see you guys when hopefully everything in here is looking a little bit tidier and more clear it out. With the garage floor paint, it's probably gonna take around 24 hours to dry. And that means tomorrow morning, I won't be able to come in here and walk on the floor, which means I won't be able to make the horses breakfast. 
And I don't think they're gonna be too happy about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make their breakfast now, then I'm gonna keep it in the storeroom, obviously make sure that um, nothing can get into there. And um, then it's all ready for the morning and I won't have to worry about walking on the paint. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So now that's all done, the next thing we need to do is put all the feed bins on the top of the counter. And that's because, again, I'm going to be painting the floor, so I don't want those guys in the way. Um, also, I need to think about when I move everything over, that is going to be like a whole day's process, because I'm going to have to put all the feed bins and all the feed in the correct new metal bin in the room next door, so that's going to be like a whole process. Um, so I'm kind of not really looking forward to it, but I'm also because it's going to be really satisfying afterwards. But anyway. Time to move the heavy feed bins up. So the new tack room is now empty, I've swept everywhere because obviously you don't want a dusty floor to paint onto and it's looking so much better now, it seems really weird with it being completely empty as well. I've also removed my saddle from my saddle rack, just the bottom one because don't really want to get any paint on that. So the next thing I'm going to do is hopefully paint all the brickwork around the edge in a dark grey, I thought that would look really nice just because although the brickwork is nice, there's just some places where it doesn't look too great and it also help seal it up a little bit more and I think the dark grey will look really cute. And then in that same colour I'm also going to be doing the floor so yes, it's painting time. I've even got the painting outfit on. I thought the painting was done. The painting is never done. That's something that I've learned from this project. So yeah, time to get my brushes, my paint and get started. Falling carefree from my worries Said that happy is growing on trees Chasing cheap thrills, out for the kill Leaving gold footsteps around me Colors and lines, make me tie die I am in heaven, I'm in the sky Call me top shelf, carry myself to well I'm walking around us I've just finished painting all the bricks and I feel like a lot of people are gonna be like No Esme, don't paint the bricks, they looked so pretty before well, the problem with these bricks is, well, it's good because they're made out, they're like recycled bricks, but the only bad thing about them is that they are pretty crumbly and dusty and I want in here to be as dust free as possible, especially as I'm gonna have all my nice bits and bobs out on display. So I thought I'd paint them. I think they look really nice and also with the floor, gonna be, it's gonna be matching as well. I think it's gonna look so good. Um, it's also gonna really help with sealing everything up as well because in here, it's gonna kind of be my home away from home because I'm probably gonna do lots of filming in here, tack cleaning, that kind of thing, especially in the winter because we've insulated all the walls. It would be silly not to paint them. So the next thing I'm gonna do is paint the floor and I feel like that's gonna be so much easier because the brickwork's all bumpy and obviously it's crumbly and dusty. The bricks do absorb quite a bit of the paint as well. So I feel like painting the floor, it's a smoother surface. I'm also gonna have to keep reminding myself to do a nice thin coat because if not, this is never gonna dry. So um, yeah, time to get out the roller. I'm gonna have to think about this quite a bit as well because I can't just go painting everywhere because I'm gonna have to be walking backwards at the same time and making sure that I don't end up walking on any of the paint. Straight to all my better days Looking through rose-colored glasses at all my mistakes Breaking through the ceiling, iron face Baby, watch me come alive, come alive Strike like lightning in my lungs Can't fight it, my love is like a drug I got fire dancing in my eyes so bright Can't help the way I light up every time I strike, run away, glitter and shades in the game every time I play Misery's gone, heart is turned on neon I'm twisting around. Oh my goodness, the floor is looking so good with it all painted. That was probably the most satisfying painting I've done today or in the whole project even because I was using the roller but I was using it on the floor which was 
felt so nice compared to when I had to roll the ceiling. That was not fun. But it just very satisfyingly glid across the floor. You could see where you'd been before and it just looks totally different. It looks so good. I also have a tiny little rug that I might put in here as well. So that would be like an extra little finishing touch. Obviously when I put all the furniture in, I only have one bit of painting left to do. Yes, I haven't quite finished yet. And that is the inside of the doors here. To make it even more insulated, we even insulated the doors. Um, so that's why we've got these wooden panels over the top. So I need to paint those. I don't know if I want to paint them in white, so it kind of goes with the walls on the inside. Maybe not. I'm thinking maybe like a dark gray or a light gray could be quite nice because that will only need a few coats when white will need like four coats like I did before. And I think I'm done with doing the four coat painting. You know, I feel like I've done enough painting in this project, but yeah, it looks so good. So I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow when it might be time to move the furniture in. All right, everybody, it's now the next day and I am so excited. I'm more excited than I probably am on Christmas. We started this project back in April. It's now October. The tack room in here is like the base of it is now finally complete. And today, hopefully, fingers crossed, is going to be the day that I can move in my fort furniture, organize all of my tack and horsey bits and bobs, but we need to check if the floor is dry because if it's not dry, then I just can't move furniture and I can't walk in it. So uh, moment of truth, let's look inside, give it a little test and see if I can walk on it. Okay. I think it's dry. Oh my goodness. We can move in the furniture, wait. Check the feet. Yep, it's all good, guys. First walk in the new tack room. Obviously, we need to move these out of the way. Ignore that they're there. All I know is that I can move my furniture in, and that's made me so happy. Ah, let's go get it. <laughs> all right, let's fill this room with secondhand, pre loved, recycled furniture and make this look a little bit more like a tack room. Looking through rose colored glasses at all my mistakes Breaking through the ceiling, I'm faced Baby, what's your come alive, come alive Strike like diamond in my lungs Can't fight it, my love is like a drug Alright guys, here is my wardrobe And I feel like half of you are either going to be like Yes, I totally get what style the new tack room is going to be or half of you are gonna be like, why have you bought a grandma's wardrobe? So uh, this I actually got from a charity shop, which um, at first I was thinking of going to Ikea, just getting some cheap furniture from there, putting it in the tack room. And then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go thrifting. I'm gonna go to some charity shops, see if they have any secondhand furniture, because I thought that's gonna be so much better for the environment. And also, you know, it's for a tack room. It's not for like a house or anything like that. So it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. Um, so this I got from a charity shop for less than a brand new wardrobe would have been from shops like Ikea and things. And I fell absolutely in love with this. I think it's 19th century and this is actually a gentleman's wardrobe. It's the perfect height because I'm taller than it. So it means I can put things on top as well. But if I do a little open inside, I thought the storage in here was so good because it's got like a little hanging thing here that actually comes out. So I was thinking I could put my like white show saddle pads in here or I could put like a show jacket or just like cut clothes and things if I'm doing photos that day. There's also loads of little storage bits in here. I love the um, little drawers they have as well so I could put like ear bonnets, boots, you know, the creativity of storage, you know, in my brain. I've got it all in my brain guys but you know, there's lots of different compartments which I thought was really cute. And also, you know, with the white walls, I was thinking of getting like white plastic furniture and then I was like, you know what? and a really nice dark wood, which I feel like is coming a little bit more back into fashion in the interior design route. I don't know, uh, I'm not a pro interior designer, this is just things I like. Um, but I thought that would look really like a really stark contrast compared to like the plain white walls. Also, you would have seen me put my uh, mirror in. That was probably the most expensive purchase, but again, was secondhand, reusable, and it's probably actually the same amount as what a mirror brand new would cost. But still, I am absolutely in love with it. It gives me sort of Disney princess vibes, if you know what I mean. I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna walk in here and it's gonna be kind of dark academia, Harry Potter, that kind of, you know, as in a, in a tack room crossed with like a 
country pub and country cottage. That's the sort of route I'm going for. I think it's going to look really cute in the end. Obviously, the only things that I've bought that isn't secondhand was the mat for the door for putting your shoes on so mud doesn't come in here, the rug and some jars as well. Some, and then some, I've got some plastic plants. I'm a plant lover, but we have no windows in here. If I had plants in here, they would die. So I've gone for plastic ones that does kill part of my soul. But there we go. It is what it is. And I wanted to bring some greenery in here as well. Um, so I'm going to have to somehow move this onto the back wall, which is going to be it's going to be a process. I mean, I did drag it all the way from, you know, the car garage with this little guy here. Um, but now it's yeah, time to do some some shuffling. <gasps> Will it fit? <laughs> might be thinking, Esme, what on earth are you going to be doing with it? Um, but I thought this was just so cute because it comes with actually these um, little panels, those glass ones that go here and here. And I like, I have been this prepared. I know how long my Charles Owen helmets are and how wide they are and how many I'll be able to fit in each section. When I was looking up furniture online, I was looking at all the dimensions and so many of them were like two centimeters off where it just wouldn't have fit. Um, but I, I'm thinking I can put all my helmets along here and then they actually came with these little cabinet things. Um, so if I open it up, I was thinking, I don't know if I'm gonna do this with bridles or head collars, get a little hook and then in here, it's like a little, bridal display. I thought that would be really cute. It also has um, lots of storage things at the bottom so I could put countless of horsey objects in there as well. But I'm just giving you a bit of a tidy. Um, this has actually been sitting in our garage for about a month and when it arrived I was so excited I gave it a clean and since it's been sitting there in the garage it's got a, a bit dusty again. So uh, yeah I'm just giving it a bit of a wipe over getting all the sort of excess <laughs> dust off. But yeah I just can't wait until I put everything on here and in here and it's starting to look a little bit more like a tack room. Also, we moved this so much. Um, I was very indecisive of where I wanted it. I feel like it's the perfect sort of distance so I can still put my saddles up and down along here, but not too much in the way. It's kind of more central now. At first I was like, oh, if I put it in the corner, I could put like a mirror here. And then I was like, mm, maybe not. It looked a bit funny in the corner. So it's definitely the big centerpiece of the tack room. So yeah, I'm gonna finish dusting and then it's time to move all my bits and bobs in. Oh, I keep sinking into your blue. My goodness, this is like all my dreams come true, being able to have all of my helmets on display. As you guys know, my last tack room, because it was so sort of damp and also really dusty as well, I had to have them all in their helmet bags. To, but to be able to see them all on display, oh my goodness, it's so cool. Um, I just need to hide this away. There we go. <laughs> the little buckle was uh, peeking out. But yeah, oh my goodness, obviously, the average equestrian does not have this many helmets. Um, Charles Owen are a very generous sponsor. So I do have quite a few, including my own that I came out with this year, which is so exciting. So thank you so much to everybody who um, has already got this helmet already. Uh, the, you know, you guys have been amazing and I love hearing your feedback and so far everybody's really loved it. So thank you guys. Um, also just a quick little reminder that if you are thinking of getting this as a Christmas present for yourself or a loved one, then be sure to order soon. Um, just so then it's made in time for Christmas because all of the helmets are made for order. They take around six weeks to make. So just a little heads up because I don't want anybody to get disappointed. Um, but yeah, oh my goodness. This is just like a tiny bit of my tack room that I've done so far. 
are the sort of helmet almost shrine. Um, but yeah, now it's next, next need to put some other bits and bobs in and oh, I'm just so excited you guys. I've been waiting for this moment for so long and it's finally here and it's looking even better than I imagined. Into the dark while we collide. Tell me that I'm all you ever wanted. Take me to a crowded place and I'm not That's so satisfying. Like a whole jar fits in perfectly. what the current sort of feature wall storage unit is looking like with all of my helmets and all of the treat jars at the bottom. I have a rose gold horseshoe here. I think I might paint it gold just so then it matches the details on my Sadly, I have to announce fake plants. Um, I wish they were real, as I said before, like in my loft, it's like a jungle in there. I have so many real plants. I'm a plant person, um, but it is a fake one. But I think just a bit of greenery adds a little little touch to it. And it honestly feels like, you know, when you walk around um, trade stands at horse shows, like, you know, the really fancy ones where they have it all country chic. That's kind of what I've gone for. And I feel like you can really see it here. It looks less like a granny's display unit for all of her little trinkets and things. And more of a, oh my goodness, country horse treats helmet tack room but um i think i'm gonna have to finish today's video here the last thing actually i might do today is paint the doors because it's one of those things where if i don't do it today it just won't happen because i'll get too excited about decorating my tack room you know i've got a bit of that excitement out by doing this um and then it'll just be one of those things that i just never have time to do so i think i'm gonna do that now before we finish up but I think I'm gonna have to do the rest of the putting things away and storage thing in another video. If not, this is just gonna be way too long. Um, but don't worry, that will be coming out soon. Um, but yeah, time to, time to get into my painting gear for hopefully one last time because I'm just fed up with painting. I am, I'm done, I'm done guys. L last one, let's go. why but I really thought that I was gonna be able to finish this project in today's video but I don't know if there's even gonna be like two more parts after this because there is still so much more to do for example uh, the lighting isn't quite done yet the electrician should be finishing that off next week so then we'll have pretty lighting in here hopefully um, also I'm planning on put having like a horsey washing machine that I can have in here so I can wash my saddle pads boots, especially in the winter when everything gets so muddy and grimy. Also, I need to get all of my horse tack in here as well. I still need to move in my bridles, my head collars, my boots, the horse's boots, you know, lots of storage organization coming soon. But also now I've moved like all of the furniture that I've bought secondhand from charity shops in here, I'm now realizing that there's probably room for quite a lot of other different bits and bobs. So the plan is tomorrow is that I'm gonna go thrifting again. I'm gonna look at some charity shops and vintage shops and secondhand shops and see if there's anything else that I think could, you know, make in here seem a little bit more cozy because it does seem very empty now. I'm used to this being absolutely rammed and full of different stuff, but now it's feeling so spacious. It feels like a proper room, almost like a proper house, which is very cool. Um, but yeah, there is still a lot more to do. And silly me thought, oh, I'm done with painting out time to celebrate there is one bit of painting left that i need to do and that is the wall where i used to make the feeds we have these two sort of planks of wood above and i just need to decide what i want to paint that i was thinking maybe like a really dark brown and then it can match all the dark brown furniture or i could go for a little bit of an accent color color a bit of a pop not quite sure yet we will have to wait and see but anyway guys i just want to say a huge thank you for watching today's video you guys are the reason that my dreams have come true with this tack room and it's all possible to do this, so thank you. Um, if you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe, it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye!
Hello everybody, this is me and welcome back to the stable renovation series. I think we're on episode three now of the new tack room. So if you haven't seen the last one where I created this beautiful background that you can see now, I'll leave a little icon above so you can watch that first, just because I don't wanna give you guys any spoilers. But anyway, We've been rather busy here for the new tack room. I've been thrifting again, and I've actually got a new chest of drawers that I'll show you later. But actually, something that I did yesterday that has made it look so different in here is some painting. Yes, I did even more painting. So the back wall that you guys might know when this used to be the feed room, where I made all the feeds up, had this sort of wooden, very rustic looking wall. And um, it's always kind of bugged me that the wood on the wall and the wood on the countertop were different. So it's something I've wanted to paint for such a long time. And also the wood isn't really the same color as the furniture I have. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna paint it. And I really struggled choosing what color I was gonna paint it with. I, at the um, store that we went to, they basically, in the sort of type of paint we wanted, either had a dark gray or this really nice olive color. And I was really like umming and ahhing. And for ages, I did a poll on my Instagram story and it was 50-50. In the end, you guys with 51% chose the dark gray, which at first I was like, oh my goodness, this might be a little too dark. What have I done? But actually it looks so good. So um, here's some footage of me yesterday when I painted the back wall. When she won. looking like oh my goodness I even did the um, underneath as well and also the sort of wooden parts here too and it looks so good it honestly looks like it's part of someone's kitchen in like London or something <laughs> if you know what I mean um, at first I was really worried that this is gonna be dark but I have an idea of how I can brighten up so if you guys have been watching my channel for a while you'll know that when this was the feed room I had loads of rose gold horseshoes going across and I thought to go with a lot of the picture frames I have a lot of the mirrors I have that I'm gonna put up here they're they're all in like a really old fashioned sort of bronzy gold color. So I was thinking I've actually got some spray paint that I can spray paint the horseshoes in that color, put them along here. And I feel like the horseshoes are gonna really pop so much against this dark gray as well. This gray also is almost the same color as my helmet. So that makes me really happy because you guys know me. Love a good bit of matchy matchy. Also the gray ties in with the sort of gray around the stable. So when you walk in here, it's not like totally different as well. Like obviously the floor's gray. So there's quite a lot of gray, but don't worry. We're gonna brighten it up soon. I've got something very exciting to show you in a sec. But first I thought I would show you my chest of drawers because I am absolutely in love with them. Okay guys, I promise that this is still an equestrian channel. It's not Bargain Hunt or Antiques Roadshow or, no, or in America, I'm pretty sure you guys have American pickers. You know, this isn't a DIY channel either. It's a horse channel. Doesn't quite feel like it at the moment, but oh my goodness, this chest of drawers I fell absolutely in love with and I was going around the charity shops and things. So I'm glad that the money goes to a good cause, but this, I'm pretty sure it's Edwardian and is absolutely gorgeous. Honestly, if I get a house one day, then this, like, I'd, I'd, I'd love to have this in my house. Like, I might steal it from my tack room, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I love the, um, obviously, the detailing on it. And also, I love how there's little drawers at the top. Like, I was looking at this and the guy was like, I don't know what you'd fit in there. And um, he was like, you could probably put socks in there. And I was thinking, oh, I could put my gloves in there, like my riding gloves. Um, didn't say it was for a tack room because I thought that'd be a bit strange. Um, but yeah, this one's like a really nice size. I can maybe put hat silks in. So lots of organization that's gonna be very satisfying and a lot of thinking about as well how I'm gonna put things where. But the next thing I'm gonna show you, I am way too excited for, and that is my saddle pad organization. We're now in the corner where my saddle pad collection, obsession, whatever you'd like to call it, is going to go. I've even done an extension, so um, just in case, 
any more come up into the collection in the future, but here it is. We have a towel rail. I went for a white one, so then you can't actually see it that much. That's why it's kind of camouflaged and hidden. I've also used um, extra long screws because I want to make sure that it can withstand the weight of the whole collection obsession. Um, but yeah, the, now I'm, I'm getting too excited. Now I'm gonna go and grab all of my saddle pads, probably gonna put them up in rainbow order again as well and put them along here. But wait, we're not finished yet because I have even more saddle pad storage. Because if you go underneath here, you can't see it, but there's also a rail here. So if there's an overflow of saddle pads, I've got room for them. Okay, time to go and grab them. are now all up and oh my goodness it may it's made me realize how many i have like before it was just kind of in there didn't really think about it but to physically one by one put every single one up there must be at least there must be around 40 50 here i don't want to count i know somebody in the comments will tell me how many there are i don't want to know um but yeah i'd like to say a huge thank you to lumia obviously um, a lot of these were gifted by them um a normal equestrian doesn't need more than like eight saddle pads. Like this is definitely excessive, <laughs> but um, it's my job and I'm really lucky to say that. So thank you. Um, and thank you for watching because you guys are the reason that this is possible. If I could show like 15 year old Esme how many saddle pads I'd have in five years time, her, her brain would explode. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it's actually getting a little darker now. The, uh, the lights, um, we do have them, but they're not working because this is like one little bit the electrician needs to do to actually get them working, working, if that makes sense. So um, before it gets too dark, I don't think I'll be able to move my boots in until tomorrow. So I'll see you guys with tomorrow Esme that will be very excited about putting all of my uh, boots, gloves, hat silks, ear bonnets away, all organized in my new chest of drawers and wardrobe. It's now a new day and this is probably going to be the last look you guys see of the old tack room. I was going to say in all its glory, but it's really not looking great. The last couple of days, um, it's been quite weird kind of having two different things in two different places. And if I'm being honest, I haven't really tidied things in here because I'm like, it doesn't need to look pretty. I've just been chucking head collars everywhere, grooming brushes. It is an absolute mess. Um, but now it's finally time to move a few of my head collars and my boots and things all into the new room. <laughs> Heading west on I-10, leaving Arizona. No catch, never looking back, but I think that I can see where I'm going. I, again, did not realize how many head collars, or I know a lot of people call them polters, in the UK, we call them head collars, but um, we have quite a few. Um, yeah, so I decided at the top, I would go for all the pinky, purpley, ready colors. And then at the bottom, we have all the blues and greens. Um, then I have all of the horses, sort of more neutral head collars. So I have a navy one here. Then I have their leather ones. And look how tiny little Duke's one is. Mickey's head collar, his leather one, he actually chewed and broke it. So I do need to get him a new one. Although um, I do have quite a lot, they're all in cob. So there aren't actually many that fit Mickey's size. Um, and then I have these little stragglers at the end that I didn't really know where to put them because these, these actually all go together really nicely. They're all very autumnal colors. So going with the season, um, but I've run out of hooks now. I could kind of maybe hang them like this. I don't know, I'll, fi I'll find somewhere for them. I definitely have too many, too many head collars, but there we go. Actually, that looks a little neater. I feel bad putting Jukes at the back. His can go at the front. 
Yay, okay, I'll find somewhere for those. They do look a little messy, but it's not looking too bad. I'm quite liking it. I, at first, was a little hesitant about the color of the behind, although this color actually goes really nicely with the bluey greeny head collars. The ones up here, that blue, because it's a little dark here, it doesn't really pop that much, so it doesn't really be like all color clashes. It actually looks nice, quite nice. I didn't really want to paint them because obviously it's got the vintage style to it. I was thinking maybe going like a dark gray or the same blue as my Voltaire wall, but no, I, I'm, I'm happy with this. We're getting there guys, obviously. As days goes along, I might look at it and be like, mm, might switch the colors around or things like that, but I'm happy with it now. And I think the next thing we're gonna do is go and grab all of my ear bonnets, hat silks, and the horse's boots and put them in my chest of drawers. Hello everybody. I have my chest of drawers mess here that I'm gonna be putting into my new chest of drawers. Um, I don't really know where to start with this. I think I might go gloves and then hat silks or hat silks then gloves. I'm just gonna grab stuff and see what I find. So uh, this could be the glove drawer. Organization, okay, that's for future Esme to think about. This is gonna probably be the hat silks drawer. Um, where do I even start? Okay. So these are all the Charles Owen hat silks. I'm just gonna pop them over in this corner or like my ones that have my logo on. Um, so they can go over there and then I think I might do like rainbow ones that side and then do like my ones this side. I'm gonna go for boots. Will that go over that bit? Yes, it will. Oh, nice, it props it up too. And are some of my boots a little bit dirty? <laughs> yes. Should I probably have cleaned them before putting them in here? Yes, but they're gonna get dirty anyway. So I'm gonna try and put them in here. I feel like they're gonna roll around a bit. So I'm really gonna stuff up the chest of drawers. You can also see how, yes, this is like a really old chest of drawers. There's a little crack here that I might need to fill with some like wood filler kind of thing. But it, it'll do, it's doing well, it's holding strong. <laughs> I'm just gonna be putting all of my show ear bonnets or fly veils in here I thought this would be a nice little area just because there's less of them and I felt like they're all gonna fit in this drawer really nicely I actually have some shelves here. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna put in here yet I could actually fold up like my horses like travel rugs maybe and put them here I don't know obviously there's a lot to think about I might switch things up as I go along but for now I thought the ear bonnets would go in here really nicely. All right, so this is what the wardrobe is currently looking like. I have all of my body protectors and my back protector, my shadow, here at the front, because that's probably the one I use the most. Um, then I have my clippers here, and then I have my grooming kit, or one of my many grooming kits. And now I just need to figure out what I'm gonna put up here, because it's quite narrow, or like low down. I'm not really sure what's gonna fit here. I'm sure I'll find something, but so far I'm filling it up nicely. I have two more drawers left of bits and bobs so I'm gonna go look in the old tack room and see what's left because it is it's still messy in there and there's still lots of stuff that I need to tidy up all right so I have now filled the wardrobe I'm gonna go into more detail about what's in what compartment in the final tour for you guys but anyway here I actually have these are some old wine crates and I thought they were so cute this tack room as you can tell is very um, reuse and recycle so here they are and I thought for a little bit of a feature wall for something a little bit different I could put my boots in them now I was really worried when I bought these I was like oh no what are the boots don't fit of course I could have put something else in there but they fit in perfectly wait I'm just gonna click that in but they fit absolutely perfectly obviously like 
they're kind of in the position where when I'm riding, when my heels are down, so that's why they're kind of slanted. They obviously have boot trees in to keep them as nice as possible. But look, look how good it looks. Maybe with some like lights on them and things as well. It's gonna look awesome. And talking about lights, we don't quite have the electrics done yet. That will be done very soon. But for some sort of feature lamps, um, I, this is like one of the only things that I've kind of bought that's brand new because I thought, don't really want to be buying secondhand electrics. That's a little bit dodgy. Do not want to start a fire. Um, so I have bought some really cool light fittings. These are very sort of industrial. So um, I thought these bulbs are really cute. They're definitely a bit of a feature. And I thought, you know, either side of my um, helmet rack, that would look really cute. Um, there's lots of different bits I need to open up. I haven't actually looked through here. They arrived not that long ago. I've also gone for brass fittings. So everything is gonna um, be color coordinated because everything has sort of brassy accents on. Um, so if you can imagine this up on the wall with the really cool big bulbs on, it's gonna look awesome. All right, so we now have my favorite mirror. I've got to say, I've got three mirrors in here. I know it's a bit excessive, but it makes the room feel so much bigger. This is probably my favorite just because it's the most grand one. This is also the most grand piece of furniture. So it's just like, boom, the first thing you see when you walk in. I love it. However, this is pretty dirty. So I'm gonna use some window cleaner, um, give it a bit of a wipe down and see what it looks like after. All right guys, it's now a new day and today is all about horseshoes. So I kept all of the rose gold ones from my old tack room or old feed room. I'm really getting confused with the different names of, because they're both sort of in limbo at the moment. They're both like half and half. But anyway, I have all the old rose gold ones and the plan is to spray paint them in the bronzy goldy paint. So it matches the rest of the room and so it's a little bit different as well. So it looks brand new. Um, but what I actually very cleverly did when I put them up in the old feed room is I um, made sure when I put them up, I had exactly one horseshoe apart. So if I did want to put more up at a later date, I would know. So I've just counted all of these. I have 11, so I need to do probably just like a little bit more than 11, just in case, um, with some new horseshoes. Now, I have a, didn't really realize how big my horseshoe collection was. I have a whole bucket full of horseshoes that are kind of old and rusty so I'll be picking the nicest ones so the next thing I need to do is try and get all the rust off the old ones get them looking good and then it's time to get the spray paint which is going to be so satisfying spray them all down and see how they turn out after obviously this is the before this is the after um but they're looking so good now obviously i could make them a little less rusty if i use the angle grinder like i have before in the past but i thought they're going inside they're not really going to get rusty and once i've painted over them they're going to be fine also like this is what they look like in the rose gold kind of before and after from back when i painted these ages ago but now i'm going to put these all outside on a bit of cardboard and spray them down So I actually have two different colors here. One is more of a bronze and one's more of a gold. I wasn't sure which one I was gonna prefer because obviously the gold is a lot more shiny and the bronze is a bit more of a warm color and it's a little bit more matte or yeah. Anyway, so I'm not sure which one I'm gonna like. So I'm gonna, um, I sprayed a bit on the cardboard. This one definitely reminds me a bit more of the rose gold uh, when this one's more kind of yellowy. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna spray two horseshoes to two different colors and then gonna pick which one I like the most and then do the rest all in the same color. Let's go bronze first. Oh, 
Oh, I think I might like that one more. That's really nice. I feel like this is just gonna be too yellow. Like it's kind of like a weird fake gold. Hmm, oh, this is so tricky now because this is a really pretty color, but I don't know if it's just gonna look too similar to the like rose gold and how it used to be. I might need to go and get like one of the frames and see which color it matches most. Cause I feel like, although that's a prettier color, I think this is gonna pop way more on the dark wood. Ooh, it's tricky, it's tricky. Okay, so I know that they're both very similar colors. I've actually gone back up to the tack room, had a look at the mirror that they're gonna be next to, and it's definitely more of the sort of yellowy gold rather than the bronze. So I think that's what I'm gonna go for. I also think this color's gonna pop a little bit more against the sort of darker background. The bronze is really nice, and I might do a few extras to sort of put here and there around the tack room because the bronze does go really nicely with the light fittings. I don't know, the light fittings are kind of like an in-betweeny color, but yeah, I think I'm gonna, we're gonna go all out. We're gonna go for the shiny one. Although looking at them on the horseshoes, they don't, they look the sort of same amount of shiny, which is good because I didn't want it to be like too in your face, like too much, but I think, I think it will look good. I think it will be okay. It won't be like, oh my goodness, what has Esme done? Like the whole thing is just really bling bling. That wasn't the, that's not the look I'm going for. But I think with a bit of this on, I think it'll look fine, it'll look nice. shoes are now painted and I think they're gonna look so good. Um, I also did three in the more bronzy color. I'm really happy with the color I chose because these do look very similar to the rose gold and I wanted it to be a little bit different to show you know it's not the old feed room anymore. Um, but anyway I'm going to tomorrow hopefully by the time uh, tomorrow comes around these will be dried. Put them up in the new tack room, I also have lots of other little bits and bobs that I need to add to it. For example, um, I've ordered some like industrial fairy lights, if you know what I mean. So they're gonna look really cool in there. Also when the lighting's done and all the light fittings are on there. I also have lots of other little bits and bobs like paintings, photos, pictures I want to put up on the walls to give it that sort of chaotic look in a good way um, but anyway you guys I hate to be that youtuber or that person but to see the finished product I'm gonna do a whole tour I feel like just putting a little tour at the end of this video it's not gonna do the tack room justice especially as I have spent so many hours painting decorating building putting things up so don't worry coming very soon will be a tack room tour where, where I go into full detail where I've put everything and why and um, all of the storage and organization I'll go in all the drawers a really full depth tour because I know a lot of you guys have requested that but anyway before today's video gets too long I'm going to finish it off here I just wanted to say a huge thank you for watching today's video if you're new or have not done so already please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it and thanks again for watching I just really appreciate it you guys are the reason that I've been able to do the stable renovation I've had so much much fun doing this it's a little bit of sweet because it feels like it's gonna end soon we still have the feed room to do so don't worry today I'm actually gonna be buying some bits and bobs for that but anyway I'll say goodbye now bye guys <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to the stable renovation series. Yes, we're not quite done yet because today's episode is all about the new feed room. We've done quite a lot in this series. We've painted all the stables, we've added the wash bay, we've added Duke's new stable, we've even got the new tack room as well. But finally, it's time to do the feed room, um, which is very important because, you know, that's where I've got to make up all the horses feeds. I don't know why I left this till last, but here we go. At the moment, the uh, new feed room was the old tack room so there's lots of different bits and bobs in there and it is very messy it is not looking good um yeah basically the last sort of few weeks while we've been making the transition into the new tack room i just haven't really tidied it because i'm like i don't need to i'm not using this room anymore so it's an absolute pigsty so what i did yesterday was i did a massive tidy up so Here's past Esme doing a very satisfying time lapse of me getting everything out of there, ready for me to paint it today.
seems so weird seeing the new feed room completely empty because this has been my tack room for like four or five years. Um, I'm used to being absolutely jam-packed. Even though everything's been taken out, it still does feel quite small. So the plan today is, I thought the painting would be over by now. If you couldn't tell by the outfit I'm wearing today, we're gonna be doing some painting. Um, if you watched my tack room renovation series, you'll know that I really couldn't decide between this nice olive green sort of sage green paint or the gray. I went for the gray in the end because that's what you guys voted for on Instagram, but I thought to go with the horse feed and everything the green would actually look really nice in here it's a bit of a lighter color I didn't want to go too dark in here um, because it's a small room and that'll just make it seem even smaller so I thought the nice light green would be nice it's also a little bit more practical compared to white because um, it's not white but anyway so that's the plan for today I think I'm just gonna do the bottom to start with I don't know if I'm even gonna paint the top but anyway time to get the paint out time to do some painting and this again is gonna be very satisfying Oh, I should have shaken it before. Ooh, okay, moment of truth. Will it be a nice colour? Um, I was just thinking, I have used this screwdriver a lot. I feel like if any agri girls out there will understand what I mean, but I find I use a screwdriver for things that it's not supposed to be used for. For example, stirring paint, opening up a paint pot, jump starting our quad that the key doesn't work in so you have to use a I probably shouldn't be telling you that but anyway um the green color of the paint it's actually way nicer than I remember obviously you can see it on the outside of the tin but on the inside it's like it, it's a different game it's a different game obviously I've got to wait for it to dry and things I was worried it was going to be a little bit too dark or it was going to look like a kind of ugly shrek green but it's actually a really nice green. I'm really happy with it. So um, it's going to look like one of those nice little cottagey kitchens. That's the sort of style I'm going for in here. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, time to do some painting. Okay, first bit. <gasps> that is a nice green. I love that. I don't know if it'll look a bit blue on the camera. And this light, in certain light, it does look a tiny, tiny bit bluey. It looks more bluey than I was expecting, but it's still very pretty. OMW. On my way to you, good at what I do. I'm OMW. Watch me walk away, putting myself on display. One, two, three a day. I'm on my way, on my way. I'ma have you on tiptoes, watching my diamond after glow. I know you wanna take me home. I'm on my way, on my way. The green paint is now complete and I'm so happy with how it looks. I was so worried it was going to be such a horrible green or that it just wouldn't suit it or it would be too dark. But I think it looks really nice. Hopefully it looks more green and less uh, blue now in this light. But yeah, I'm really happy. It's a beautiful sage green. You might notice that there was a big box at the back that I used to put my helmets in. Now I've just taken that down because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paint that in the nice grey. Um, and then I was thinking I could put my feed buckets in that box. Obviously, I did actually measure it out to see if it fits. Um, I can fit four in the actual box, but then I could put... Um, how many equines do I have now? And then I could put the three donkeys ones up on the top and I think that would look really nice, especially as the buckets are quite a bright colour, so I think with the grey, it won't be it won't be too much, you know? Um, I just need to also think about where the feed bins are gonna go. I think I might put it against this wall just because uh, that wall, um, I'm basically gonna put the feed bucket, uh, the feed bin against the most ugly wall because then it can, it can cover up the less pretty parts, but, I was thinking, what am I going to do on this bit of ply here? Um, so we put this up ages ago when I actually did a bit of a tack room renovation kind of thing. I can't even remember when that was. Was it like three years? Three, two, three years ago? Anyway, um, I was thinking of having like a big whiteboard and putting all of the horses' names and what they eat because this is the feed room. Now, I was thinking 
let's not do a whiteboard, let's do a blackboard, make it a little bit more vintagey. Um, and this is something I can actually make myself. So I actually bought some blackboard paint. So um, with masking tape, because I definitely do not trust myself, I'm gonna measure out um, where I want the blackboard to go and then paint that. And I think I'm gonna leave the rest wood just because um, the chipboard's really difficult to paint. Um, I, can, I, th I was thinking I could maybe put some pictures up to make it look prettier, but anyway, let's go and paint the blackboard. Here I have my chalkboard paint I'm gonna be using. Now, because this is black, I feel like this is going to be a bit of a bit of a danger zone because I'm quite messy. I have put, you know, my uh, lovely masking tape here, but one wrong move, if I get the black paint on the green, it's it's game over. It's not going to be good. So um, gonna have to be very very careful, and hopefully I won't make a, make a mess. I'll do it well, and it will look good. Let's go. <laughs> The blackboard is now complete and I think it's looking so good. I've also painted a little bit more green back here because the boxes are gonna go up. It's gonna cover the messy bit, so don't worry. It looks messy now, it'll look good in the end. Um, so the last thing I need to do, which might actually be the last ever bit of painting of this project. I'm not gonna say never say never because I'm sure there will be some more painting that I'll end up doing because I cannot escape the painting. If I just sum up this year in three words, one of those words would probably be painting. But anyway, the plan is again to paint the brickwork um, all the way around the edge like I did um, previously with the tack room and also paint the floor. The floor actually looks really funny because there's this sort of area where it's lighter and I think that's where I had my chest of drawers and my wardrobe in here back when it was a tack room. And um, I think I repainted the floor at some stage but just like went round it or it's just where it's kind of worn away. But anyway, this I find really satisfying. Hopefully I need to find the roller again maybe to paint the floor. Um, but the brickwork, it's not that fun, but the rolling, that is. So it's a nice bit of painting to do for the last painting of the project. It's sort of a bittersweet moment. I'm happy but sad about it because I really enjoyed the stable renovation series. Um, but anyway, I need to go and grab the paint and get painting. Oh my goodness, how good does it look with the floor painted? I feel like with the floor painted, the green really does pop just that much more because the gray is kind of like a bluey gray for the floor. Um, but anyway, I will um, have to wait now 24 hours for the floor to dry. So no more going in there for today, but I am very excited for putting in all of the feed bins, all of the feed. But have you ever wondered how horse feed is made? I was lucky enough last summer to go to the Bailey's horse feeds mill as you guys know i'm very lucky to be a sponsored rider for them and it was so cool to see how it was made so here's some footage of back in the summer i'm here in essex in a field of wheat that's right next door to the bailey's horse feeds mill today i'm going to be showing you how this locally sourced crop can then be turned into the feed that you and i give our horses First, the cereals from the field are brought into the mill and stored in these large hoppers before being soaked and then cooked rapidly using infrared technology called micronization. This makes the feed more easily digested by the horse. Behind me here, we have a few hoppers and each one has an individual ingredient. The computer then looks at the recipe and decides how much mass is needed of each ingredient to make up the horse feed, because obviously each horse feed is different and you have to be really precise with the ingredients. All right, guys, welcome to the lab. So here I have some feed. Um, so each batch of Bailey's horse feed is sampled and then this is tested for naturally occurring prohibited substances. So this is really critical and really important. For example, athletes such as Holly Smith, who's currently um, competing on the Team GB show jumping team in the Olympics in Tokyo. But also it's really important for um, shelf life and the quality of the feed that's also tested. So very, very important stuff. The 
seen the feed being made, but the last process we're gonna see is how the feed is bagged. So over here, we have some locale balancer bags, which you guys might recognize from my feed room. So this is what Mickey and Casper are fed. And if we go over here, I can show you it being bagged. Oh my goodness. Look at this. How cool. This is so satisfying to watch. behind me then stacks 50 of the bags onto a pallet which is one ton so that's one heavy pallet and a lot of feeds. is then picked up by these electric forklifts and taken into this absolutely huge warehouse. Welcome to the warehouse. So this is where all the feed is stored and oh my goodness, I have never seen so much horse food in my life. There are so many different bays that go so high up as well. I don't know how the forklift is gonna lift this pallet all the way up there, but... And all of these are one ton as well, my goodness. I don't think even Mickey could eat this much food in his lifetime. This main warehouse is actually only one years old and up on the roof we have solar panels as well as out in the field next door. Behind me here we have the inverters that then convert the um, solar energy from the solar panels into electricity that's then used to power the mills as well as my electric car. Time to open up the trucks, get the feed in, get it ready to go. Bailey's also has its own fleet of trucks delivering feed UK wide. Then once the feed is loaded, it's time to send it off to the wholesalers, which can then feed you and my horses. Look, and there's Joey. <laughs> So here we have the feed that we've just got from our local feed shop. Um, so that is all ready to go before we put it in the new feed room. Um, I thought I'd show you around, it looks a little bit different, we've added a few things since you've last seen it. And also I need to take the tape off the uh, blackboard, so that's going to be very satisfying. Alright, before I show you around, I thought I'd show you something very exciting first. We now have lights. It has been so long since we've had lights in here and before we just had like a pull string one that didn't work very well. But we have lights, it's gonna be so nice and bright in here. So first thing in the morning when it's still dark, I can make the feeds without having to use a torch. So that's gonna be great. But here we have it, the blackboard. This is gonna be very satisfying if I do it correctly, taking the tape off. Ooh. Okay, next one. Okay, we have two for this one because I did not trust myself. Oh, those lines are so clean. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. Look at that. Okay, I haven't got any chalk yet, so I'm gonna have to order some. Um, but I thought I could like write all of the horses, like feeds on here, what they have, their names. I don't know, something like that. I thought that'd be really cute. It kind of feels like, you know, like at a cafe, they have the menu up on, <laughs> up on the wall. Here we have the horse menu. <laughs> um, I need to put this away because it's very sticky. Um, but, we also have some shelves up here, as you can see, expertly put up nice and straight. Um, I was thinking I could put all the feed buckets up here, put them in their little rainbow order. I've also got this ton of treats that I need to find somewhere for. Um, but yeah, it's not looking too bad. We've painted this green, um, so it kind of looks all seamless. But yeah, I think the next thing I need to do is grab the metal feed bin that I made absolutely ages ago, it feels like, back in the summer, pop it in here and put some feed in. Here we have the feed bin. I've put it here for now, just because this side of the wall isn't as pretty as the other one. I just felt like it kind of should go here. So if we lift it up, I still need to put the feed in here, but I've just put one, um, like a little label maker label on here. So then we can tell what feed is what. And um, so yeah, we have the Bailey's locale balancer that's gonna go in here. So I just need to do one for the light chaff and also one for the performance balancer, cause that's what Joey has. 
So you guys might remember the label maker from a few stable renovation videos back. So yep, yeah, it's back now and um, I've put in the performance balancer. So let's go see it come out and we wait. Peak entertainment. It's still going. It's still going. It's done. This is the really fiddly bit, taking it off. I hate doing this. Ah, there we go, there's one. I don't know if I should put the performance balancer here in the middle or if that's going to be too confusing with them like right next to each other. So I might put the performance balancer here and then we can put the chaff in the middle. That might be a shout actually. Ta -da. Looking good. Wow. It is looking so good, guys. It's just the little details. It's the little things that make it. So having my little labels makes me very happy. It makes me feel very organized. But anyway, now it's time to go and get the actual food and put it in the feed bin. the only one who finds this so satisfying finally seeing all of the feed in the big metal feed bin okay it could be more satisfying if they were all perfectly up to the top um however i didn't realize how big this feed bin is for example the performance balancer there's still a little bit of room up here and that's got two whole bags in so it goes to show that um you know it's a bit like a tardis in here it doesn't feel that big in here but you can fit a lot inside so that's going to be very very satisfying each morning just lifting it up and then bam I've got the feed here rather than the, you know the plastic ones we have to lift it up put the bin lid somewhere and then also with the plastic ones you know it's more likely to for mice and things to get in here so having a big sturdy metal one is like my dreams come true so I'm gonna pop that away there's like a few little bits and bobs that I need to do um I am currently <laughs> scrubbing the surfaces because it's just got years of grime especially in all the sort of cracks in the wood so I'm trying my best to give it a bit of a scrub and hopefully get it looking a little bit better there's also bits of paint on here so I might need to sand it but we'll see how it goes permanent marker all of my feed buckets because their names wear off however uh, you guys all know whose bucket this is and uh, I've never written Duke on here before so it's the first time better not mess it up I don't have a, sort of a stencil or little fine lines from previous times so uh, how big have I done it okay so I've done it just over the two lines here he's got quite a short name so this is gonna be quite tricky but I'll try my best There we 
there we go guys duke officially has his name on his cute little yellow feed bucket people still ask me yes duke's sort of color like i have a little color for coordinating everything with the horses so i know for example whose bucket is who so duke's color's yellow um i think it suits him it looks really cute it's also like the color of kind of like a crown you know duke i don't know um i think it looks really cute it suits him so now it's time to put it up i need to do the others as well i also need to sort out which bucket's going where i haven't 100 percent decided but it's not looking bad it's not looking bad so um, I've just moved all the buckets around on the floor because I'm gonna be very picky about which bucket I want where, which sounds ridiculous, but I just think, you know, when they're in the right place, it just looks a lot more satisfying. Uh, so I've had a little bucket move around on the floor and hopefully it'll be really satisfying. First time putting them up, put them in the right order, and then bam, all the buckets will be beautifully up there, clean, with their new names on and displayed. <music> Oh my goodness, how good does it look with all of the buckets in the back? There are a few little things that I want to change. For example, at the moment I've got the smaller buckets that have, for example, Willow's medicine in, some apples, cleaning things. I might make a little shelf here to put them on. Obviously I've got to do the uh, chalkboard as well. Um, so I was thinking, I don't want to be that YouTuber that's like, you don't see the finish reveal yet, but I was thinking um, next week filming a video doing a full tour so you can see what the wash bay looks like with the solarium in and working. You can see Duke's new stable. You can see a full tour of the new tack room as well with everything 100% finished and complete. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit but you can kind of see the magic, the sort of vision of the new feed room and I'm really liking it. I also have lots of really exciting videos coming soon. I had another jumping lesson with Joey, so that's gonna be in a vlog. Um, I've been to Ireland recently, um, filming with Kian O'Connor, so that was incredible. So lots of exciting videos, so uh, keep an eye out for that. But anyway, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching today's video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe, because it really does help me out. And I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time, bye. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. It's that time of year again for my autumn winter cleanup. I do this almost every year. It's something I like to do before we go into the real depths of winter where it's horribly cold, windy and rainy and you just wanna go to the yard, get stuff done, go back inside and get in the warmth. And because the horses are gonna be spending a little bit more time inside, I want to make their stables all nice. Um, if you've been following my channel, you'll know that I've been doing the stable renovation series and the stables have been painted for about seven months now, since April. So um, there's a little bit of wear and tear in places. I'm looking at Joey and Mickey here. They're the most dirty out of all of them. Um, so I've got a lot of cleaning to do and I know you guys really enjoy my cleaning videos. I find them so satisfying to watch back and edit as well. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd make everything look a little bit tidier because I'm not going to want to do that in the depths of winter. But anyway, I thought I'd start off by giving the stable doors a little bit of a scrub because especially Joey's is an absolute disgrace. So this is Joey's stable door. Um, here you can see after he has his breakfast in the morning, he likes to lick it. Do I know why? No. Is he a weirdo? Yes. Um, but no, it is just absolutely covered in saliva, bits of his food. And when I was doing the stable renovation series, when I painted this, I was like, he probably won't want to lick it once it's been painted. Maybe it's to do with the wood flavor or the texture. No, it's just his favorite thing to do. Also, all of the stable doors need a bit of a clean up because they are just absolutely filthy. There's also like a few little bits that I might need to repaint. For example, Mickey has a little scratching post or scratching spot on here. I don't know if you will see it. But um, there's a bit of wood here where uh, the paint's gone off because Mickey likes to as you would have seen from my Sable Talk videos, stand here, put his head on it, and have a good scratch behind his ears. So that might need a little bit of a tidy up because I'm also gonna be filming a big reveal from the whole Stable renovation series, the final big tour. And obviously, uh, if I'm doing that soon, I want it to look tidy. So I thought, you know what? I'll do a cleaning video first. There's also another bit that I need to um, paint because over here, uh, we now have electrics. We have a switch that turns on and off. And uh, Jelly is very clever. He um, knows how to put his nose 
and turn on and off the lights. So he's been having a party at night, turning on the lights. So we put this plank of wood here so uh, he can't reach. So I want to paint this gray so it goes with, with you know, the whole stable aesthetic rather than just having a random plank here. So hopefully people don't notice it as much, but um, that's a little bit dirty as well. So I might need to give the switch a clean as well. There's a lot of cleaning, but first I'm gonna get some warm water because it's actually really cold today. Um, with our new kettle, very fancy, it's an old one, but it's new to the tack room. Um, and get some warm water, get my scrubbing brushes out and hopefully give this a good old deep clean. <laughs> Um, now it's time to clean Joey's main stable door, which I might use something a little bit different on because it's, you know, metal. Uh, that doesn't matter. We're not gonna, you know, scratch off the paint. So I think I might, might go really at it this time. We'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna try out this cleaning paste. I actually used this in the new feed room to clean off the work surfaces and that worked quite well. So we'll see how it goes on here because last time I actually used a sander and that worked pretty well but we'll see what it we'll see if it does anything good oh my goodness that looks so much better I'm really impressed with actually obviously I need to do a bit more of a scrub there I've missed a few spots but I'm gonna quickly clean the inside of his door and I was thinking I don't know if it's a good idea or a crazy one but um you know when I cleaned the old trailer and when I cleaned the horse box I use you know the car pressure washer what if I put it on the soap setting and jet wash the whole stables obviously I don't want to pressure wash it because I feel like that might take the paint off but if I jet wash it with the soap and get a big car scrubbing brush. That might just do it, that might just do it. I don't know, I think it might be a good idea. Might go and get it. I can feel finally time to get out the big boy we've got the pressure washer um, all the bits like obviously I've done quite a good scrub on some of the areas uh, but there are some bits where you can't really see on camera but it's just a bit dusty so I thought you know what we'll get this out go all in see how it goes <laughs> falling carefree from my worries swear that happy is growing on trees chasing cheap thrills out for the kill even go footsteps around me Colors and lines Make me tie die Higher than heaven I'm in the sky Call me top shelf Carry myself too well I'm walking around the stairway Straight to all my better days Looking through rose colored glasses At all my mistakes Breaking through the ceiling Unfazed Baby, watch me come alive Come alive Day, and I'm currently in the field because we're having something done to it if you can see already it's looking very different this morning I woke up very early to take down all the electric fences put the horses out um, in different paddocks obviously they can't really be wandering around here while there's no fence up um, and that's because we have put some posts in and the plan is to section the fields into different sectors and this means we can have like a proper winter paddock a spring paddock an autumn paddock winter paddock just it just means that we can basically um, section the paddocks so they're smaller because number one my horses are good doers 
they only need a little grass and they end up being like twice the size they should be. Um, so uh, we're gonna restrict their grazing a little bit more, especially, um, actually pretty much all of them can be a little bit susceptible to laminitis, apart from Joey. All the others, their breeds, uh, not good. Anyway, so they're gonna be on a little bit of a diet. Um, but also, you know, in the winter, it gets so muddy here. So if one field is just absolutely horrible, we can give it a rest, put them in a different one. Um, so that's what's happening today. We were gonna do post and rail for all of it, and that ended up being quite expensive. So what we've done is we've put some posts in and then we're gonna put electric fence on it. That also gives us the freedom that in like a few years time or something, if we want to change it up, if these sort of paddocks aren't working for us, we can just take the other poles out or we can move where the electric fence goes. So it gives us a little bit more freedom. But anyway, this is what's happening so far. I think it's looking really good. We have four paddocks on this side. I think we're gonna have two big ones on the other side. We've also got room if we want the quad to go up and down here. So it's gonna be looking a little bit different, but it's gonna be so much more useful for the winter. All right, we're now in the wash bay and this is probably the next thing I need to clean. I gave it a bit of a tidy the other day because I filmed a groom tack up and ride with me and I didn't want it to look absolutely disgraceful. I had a quick tidy up, but these mats, I really need to get in the habit of like washing them off after I've used them because I'll make them all nice and clean and then I'll clean one horse in here and it will look awful. Um, I've had a little tidy up of all of my lotions and potions, but I said that really funny, lotions and potions. Anyway, um, I need to give that a bit of a, a bit of a clean because they're quite dusty, especially if I've, for example, got Casper in here, give him a good brush down and he's really muddy. All the little dust particles like to settle on here. So that needs a bit of a clean. I might also clean my grooming brushes cause they're kind of disgusting at the moment. But yeah, in here just needs a good old, good old tidy. Ooh, that sugar swing, you got what I think. Sipping on the potion, all that kind of motion. Just my kind of heat, keep it on me, peep. Tested by the potion, love it, this to potion. The solarium is not broken. I've just taken it down. And we have had this since, I wanna say September. Um, it's only been working for the last like a few weeks because we've only just got power. But anyway, um, look how disgusting. Wait, let me give it a better wipe. Look how disgusting and dusty it is. Um, we've had a bit of building work here. Obviously, when I brush the horses, a lot of dust goes up into the air. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna take deep clean to the max. We're gonna go for it. Also, you can see how much bee poop is on here. So I'm gonna give this a proper clean and hopefully afterwards it will be sparkling. just given the solarium a little bit of a wipe over so the dry me is currently in the sort of maintenance position that's what I'm gonna call it um, so I actually have some WD-40 here the guys at dry me recommended this because this is made of stainless steel hopefully this will get the bee poop off without me scratching it because that wouldn't be great so we'll give it a give it a try that was probably a bit too much oh we're getting there we're getting there Nice. All right, so this is now clean and it's time to hook it back up. And then I think the last thing I need to do in the wash bay is just the floor. Baby, you got 
okay it's a new day and i've kind of saved the worst job till last or best job whatever you want to say but this is definitely the muckiest and i need to clean out the drain now um just thought i'd let you guys know i've just been taking some photos i don't have all this makeup on and lipstick for cleaning out the drain i just haven't taken it off but anyway yeah i'm gonna be cleaning the drain out today i have some gloves on it's gonna be disgusting i thought i was gonna be able to do all of this in one day uh daylight savings now in the uk it's dark very early um so i don't have any daylight hours to do all the jobs that i need to do which is like exercising the horses getting photos and videos done so um Welcome to videos that are filmed over three days. Uh, yeah, the drain is not looking good. We've only had it for a few months, I want to say. And um, yeah, let, let's take a look, shall we? Let's crack this bad boy open. Nice. I don't know if I should just use my hands. I probably need like a shovel, but I don't think that's going to work very well yeah it does not look that great in there if you're wondering why it's so disgusting that's because basically all of the dirty shavings that are left out on the yard we duke had a series of time where he just liked to wee on the yard little bits of poo casper's hair all the stuff that i sweep down and out of the yard trickles down to here and basically to the drain so we've got bits of old haylage and food there's some stuff in there I don't want to know what it is um but yeah I'm gonna go and grab my wheelbarrow a shovel and what's even worse is once I've you know removed all of that muck there is a whole bucket in here that I can empty so yeah N not a nice job welcome to having horses <laughs> okay as you can see it's quite a small space so I'm gonna try my best to get as much as I can on the shovel but I might just have to use my hands is that a worm? Sorry little worm, this is not your home anymore. Come on to my shovel. Yeah, I'm just gonna use my fingers. I've got gloves on, it'll be fine. Okay, I'm gonna rescue the worms here. We've got an earthworm, hello little guy, you can live over here now. You don't particularly want to live in the drain. Oh, I'll put you with your friend. Oh my gosh, this is so wiggly. There are so many worms! Why are there so many worms? There's another one. Okay, we've got three earthworms just chilling over there. Time to get down to the real stuff. Yeah, I thought cleaning out my shower drain was gross. Oh, we've got another worm! A horse's shower drain. Even, even worse. I have a whole, like, worm collection now. Okay, I'm gonna get this off without it falling into the bucket because if not that's just more stuff for me to sort of clean out later all right everybody it's bucket time forget the bucket of doom this is the bucket of filth and i'm not looking forward to it okay oh, it's gonna be so full Right, the drain is now complete. We didn't really actually film much of it because it was such a gross job that I think the YouTube community guidelines, it would probably be against that, you know, because it was just awful. But if you've ever done this job before, you know how bad it is. I'm thankful that smell vision isn't a thing because if you guys could smell this now, it's not great. I'm definitely gonna need a shower tonight because I reek. Anyway, time to take these gloves off and get on to the next job. All right, so now that's done with, I thought for the next job we'd do something a little bit nicer, a little bit easier. So how about we do some window cleaning? It's a new window cleaner. Just taking some time. There we go. Oh no, I dropped it. What you want? The 
smells so much better than the last job. I've now cleaned the outside, however, it hasn't really been that satisfying because these windows, they are dirtier on the inside than they are on the outside. So this is Joey's and you can see where he's sneezed on it, where he's pressed his nose up against it. It is just filthy, so I think it's time to clean the inside now. I promise you it's clean. <laughs> it doesn't look it. Okay, I might have lied. I was gonna clean it on the inside, which I will do, don't worry. Um, but I've come in here and I've just realized how many cobwebs and spider webs and things and dust is in Joey's stable and probably all the other horses' stables as well. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my broom, have a little bit of a sweep on the ceiling or on the walls and hopefully um, then once all the dust has settled, clean the window. Because if not, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna clean this window and then I'm gonna clean all the cobwebs and then the window's just gonna get dirty again. So this seems like a better order, but oh my goodness, I don't even know where to start. This is so much. I might need to wear a mask for this actually, because it's so dusty. I don't wanna breathe in all that dust, do I? Yes, I do. Usually, I let me know what your favorite color mask to wear is. That is such a... 2020, 2021 question. Mine is black, so that's why I'm using a white one because I don't mind getting rid of this one. Uh, this is a proper like FPP2 one, so it's like certified. It's not just like some cloth one. So these are the sort of ones I wear when I'm like proper traveling around. And there we go. Ready for action. <laughs> that wears glasses I really feel you right now because all of my friends that have glasses they complain about when they have to wear a mask that their glasses steam up and I cannot see anything so I thought I'd wear these I might have to do one or the other for now like while I'm doing this because um, I found it's not actually that dusty like I'm not breathing in that much dust what the issue is is all the dust bits falling into my eyes so um, Borrowing these glasses for now. I think I probably look super cool. Um, here we go, new fashion icon. But no, I'm gonna try with these, see how it goes. But if I do get a bit queasy, I might have to put the mask back on. Obviously not gonna be catching anything out here. It's just, I don't wanna breathe in the dust. I keep squinting as the stuff comes because I'm worried it's gonna fall into my eyes. The dust and cobwebs on the ceiling is now gone, so it's finally time to clean this. Um, Joey loves to put his nose on it, as you can tell. I thought I would like rank all the horses' stables out of 10, 10 being the most disgusting, and we could see which horse is the cleanest and which is the dirtiest. Obviously, I think I'm gonna have to do that at the end because, you know, I wanna, I wanna judge it equally. I want to be able to see everybody's stable before I make, you know, a mark give them a mark, see how it's going. But oh my goodness, this is looking so much better. You can kind of actually see out the window now. I don't want to press too hard because obviously you don't want to break the plastic, but it's looking better guys. Joey's going to come through and be like, wow, I can see out the window. All right, so this stable wasn't looking too great to start with. I think it's going to get quite a high rank on the dirty scale. Let me know in the comments below who you think is going to be the worst. I think Mickey might be quite a high, high contender, but then Joey does like to rub his nose all over here. We'll have to wait and see. How? How is it this dirty? I feel like when it's your own stables, you don't notice sort of the cobwebs appearing because you see it every day. But when you actually properly look at it, it's like, okay, there are quite a few. This is actually kind of embarrassing. Obviously I make sure the horses have like a brand new bed and fresh shavings every day and things, but but the cobwebs, it's not really what you think about when you're doing your mucking out, filling up the fresh water kind of day-to-day -day chores. Um, so yeah, back, back to sweeping the ceiling. <laughs>
Casper's stable and his actually isn't too bad. I'd say so far I'd probably give Joey a nine, Mickey an eight and Casper like a six. His like, obviously I have given it a bit of a clean already, don't worry. But if I had to judge it, it really isn't as bad as the other boys. So well done Casper. He's actually out there now grazing, but not too bad, not too bad. And lastly, we have Duke Sable. And um, I'd probably on the dirtier scale give it a two. It really isn't dirty at all. He does have the advantage that he hasn't been here very long. And also, um, he isn't tall enough to sort of reach the window. So it's pretty much almost spotless. I don't think I'm gonna have to do really that much cleaning in here at all. So well done, Duke. You are the cleanest horse. And sorry, Joey, you're the dirtiest horse. Oh my goodness, the yard. It feels like I haven't done much, but I've done so much at the same time because it's the little jobs that I don't do every day that need doing, such as sweeping away the cobwebs, washing off the dirt that the horses have been licking on their doors, cleaning out the wash bay. I feel like everywhere just feels so neat and tidy. Even just like walking up the drive the other day, I looked at the stables and I was like, oh my goodness. They look so clean. Um, so I'm really happy with everything that I've done. It might have taken three days, but I think it was definitely worth it. It feels like such a big difference to me. Um, so that does mean that the plan is hopefully for tomorrow for me to film a big tour with everything because you guys have been requesting that for so long a full barn tour of like inside the new tap room all that kind of thing there's a few it's just still a few little finishing touches that i need to do but hopefully that will be out as soon as i can possibly get it for you guys but anyway i just want to say a huge thank you for watching today's video if you're new or have not done so already please like and subscribe because it really does help me out and i really do appreciate it and i'll see you all next time bye Alrighty, we now have light. So I thought I'd start the tour by doing it sort of anti-clockwise. So we'll do the saddles first, cause that's quite cool. Um, but I also, something that's really useful that you wouldn't really think about is I have a coat hook on the back of the door. So uh, if I get too warm, I can put it up here so I know it's safe because the amount of times I've just chucked a coat on a fence and the horses have chewed it or I've just put it on the side and it's fallen on the ground. Not good. Co hooks are very useful. Um, I also have some hooks. So I just have a spare bit here. I have Joey's breastplate. I have his dressage bridle that's in black. And to go with that, I have his uh, Adelaide dressage saddle up here. I have my jump saddle, which is my Lexington for Joey. And then I have my GP, which is my Stuttgart that I use for Casper. Um, so obviously, very pretty saddles. We have the blue wall to match because you guys know I love a bit of color coordination. Uh, if we go around, I have my breastplates. So these are the ones that I use with Casper's saddle. Um, so he's got one that's a um, stud girth that I use for jumping and then for just like dressage and things or flat work. I don't really do dressage with Casper, but for flat work and things, I use this one. We also have some really pretty sort of industrial style lights that I found for a really good price online. Um, but apart from that most of the sort of furniture and things I have got secondhand or from charity shops. Okay we're now on to one of my favorite parts of the tack room and that is my dresser. So I saw this in a charity shop and I wanted to buy secondhand and also you know from a charity shop it's really good because the money goes to charity. Um, so I absolutely fell in love with this and um, all of my friends and family at first were a little concerned they were like because uh, the photo I sent them, it had like China teapots, all like grandma sort of stuff on it. And they were like, oh my goodness, what is this going to look like? This is very different to what they thought I was going to go for. Um, but I measured it. I knew I could fit my helmets in there and they fit perfectly. So it was kind of like it was meant to be in my life. Um, also, I saw these cabinets here. They actually had little shelves on that I took out, but we open it inside. I have a Joey's bridle here. This is his sort of jumping and hacking one. It's a little dirty, so excuse that. I do need to clean it. Um, and then we have all of my helmets. Charles Owen is such a generous sponsor and I do have quite a few. At the bottom, I have their newer style helmets. So we have the halos and I have a Luna over here. So these are going to sort of be my competition ones, the gloss ones, because they are very, very pretty and shiny. I love them. Uh, then we have my skull caps in the middle. We have my two helmets that again, I love. Sorry for the promo, but 
I love them, they're so pretty. And then at the top I have my um, sort of older style Charles Owen ones with the shorter peak. I really like wearing these for dressage. I think they look really sort of professional. And then I also have another wide peak up here. Um, this is really nice in the summer because the peak is so wide. It is very good at keeping the sun out of your eyes. And then if I go in this little drawer, I have Casper's bridal. Again, is really dirty, I need to clean it. Don't worry, I will before I next ride him. And um, something else I really wanted was plants because I'm a plant person, I love plants. However, there are no windows in here. So any plant I have would permanently be dead because um, it would get no light. So I don't really like fake plants. I'm a real plant kind of person, but I saw this one and I thought it was really cute. And then it has a little gold or brassy um, pot, which goes with all the sort of details I've gone for. So for example, the light it matches and also the mirror here that I just absolutely love. It's um, really tall as well. So I can start doing sort of outfit photos and things in there, which will be really cool for Instagram. Also, you guys might be wondering what's in the bottom because obviously this unit has a lot of storage. Um, so in this one, I have sort of some extra lotions and potions, some sort of industrial sized ones that are for refills, which is good. I also have some fly spray in there that I don't need this time of year because we have no flies because it's winter. Um, in this one, I have just like mess. So these two are the mess cupboards. You don't really want to see inside there. It's just where something doesn't have a home and I chuck it in there. I feel like everyone needs a mess cupboard in their life. Um, here I have some paper towel and sponges, always useful. Uh, here it doesn't really have anything in. And then I actually have another pair of tool boots in here that are in a boot bag. Also, if you're wondering, I have my little um, sort of grooming, industrial grooming kit kind of thing. Um, this is really good for shows and taking things to places, but because, oh, I wouldn't say I'm small because I'm five foot six, which is kind of like an average height for a woman, I believe. Um, but I can, re I can reach my dressage saddle. It's fine for taking off, but um, it can be useful to stand on <laughs> to take it up and down because to save sort of space I decided to uh, put three in a row just because you know uh, it makes the room feel bigger and it takes up less wall space and I wanted to have pretty things on my wall so yeah. Hello welcome to the other side of the tack room here is my mirror that I fell in love with. I saw the mirror and I saw the dresser on the same day and I was like, this makes me feel like my um, tack room will be a sort of Disney princess crossed with a country pub, crossed with old fashioned, lovely country, dark academia. That's sort of what I went for. And when I saw those two pieces, I was like, yes, this is what I'm gonna go for. I think this will look really cool. Um, so I also from got some secondhand uh, like wine crates and I didn't measure these, but I thought, you know what? I can put anything in here, it'll be fine. And when I found out that my boots perfectly fit in them, I was so excited. So here are my um, Palisade ones. These are sort of my more competition ones. I have my really cool insulated winter ones. I haven't worn these yet this winter, but I'm I probably will wear them tomorrow because it has got so cold recently. I also have some um, photos here or paintings, sorry. Uh, they are over a hundred years old. They were about seven pounds each, I believe, or they were in between seven and 10 pounds each. And for something that old, I was like, oh my goodness. And I feel like I've sort of collected some horses. So this one, I kind of feel like what Joey will look like when he's older, when he's all whited out. Um, I have this one, which reminds me of Casper and Duke when Duke was a bit darker. And then I just have these three, which look like they're having a great time. So I thought they were really cute. So I added them and it kind of goes with the old fashioned style that I've gone for. Um, I also have my brown heritage boots and then I have my Nitro Maxes as well. These are more my everyday boots. They are so comfy. Um, oh yeah, we also, <laughs> I'm getting way too excited now guys, but I also have um, this chest of drawers. Oh my goodness. I wanted, this I fell in love with as well. I said this when I was doing my sort of stable renovation series or tack room series that I would have this in my house. Like 
obviously I don't have a house yet, but when I have a house one day, this is the sort of furniture, oh my goodness. I'm all about wooden furniture. Like, I feel like, you know, I, I, I'm lost for words, I love this so much. Anyway, um, on the top one, we have some gloves. Uh, I'm pretty sure they all have a pair. It is just a bit of a free for all in here. These are my favorite mucking out gloves because they are insulated and I've been wearing them a lot. That's why uh, there's a bit of shavings in there. You know, this is, the, this is the real life when it comes to horses. I also have this really cool headband, which is great for riding in because it keeps my ears warm. Would 100% recommend that, that is amazing. Um, <laughs> this is the bits and bobs drawer where um, little small things that don't have a home go in here. So we have some plating bands. A pair of scissors, they are always useful. Uh, I have a sharpie, some polos, a hairnet, a hairbrush, some tape, you know, the essentials, the essentials. Um, <laughs> this drawer uh, surprises people when they open it because it's full of all of my pom-poms and I feel like somebody could open this drawer up and think, oh my goodness, there's a rat in it. Um, but no, <laughs> these are all faux fur by the way, guys. So these are all the pom-poms that go in my hat silks, which I believe is in the next drawer here. Um, there are quite a few. Uh, we have my Lemire ones this side. I also have a, um, for hacking on the road, a reflective one. Um, and then I also have my hat silks on this side. So all of my cute pastel ones that I love. Um, so yeah, a big, a big selection. There we go, let's shut that properly. In the next drawer. We have all of the fly veils. So these are all of my colorful ones that are kind of like fun that I wear like day to day, that kind of thing. Uh, Cause my show ones are in a different section that I'll show you in a sec. And then lastly at the bottom, we have all of my boots. Now these were organized. It's kind of become a little bit more of a free for all, but that's okay. Um, some of them are a little bit muddy cause you know, it's winter. I do need to give them a bit of a clean, but you know what? It does the job. They all fit in there really nicely actually, so. It's quite old, this guy, so got to treat him with some care. There we go. And then uh, we have a radiator. This I was really excited about um, because although we don't have it on very hot, it just means that things won't really go moldy because my last tack room, there was some mold in places. So if you're wondering why I'm so excited, that is why, like, it's just the little things I just, I still can't believe this is all real. If you couldn't tell already, like I'm just so grateful that I can't believe this is mine. But anyway, <laughs> moving on, we have another wardrobe in this absolutely beautiful dark brown that um, I loved as well. Um, it's actually a really nice height because I can just about see over it like perfectly. I can rest my chin on it if I want. Um, but no, it's a really good height. So it means I could put some more things on top of it for storage. I also have some absolutely gorgeous picture frames here. Again, that I bought from like an antique place. Uh, this one's broken and needs fixing. So I got them all for a really good price as well. Um, probably cheaper than like a normal picture frame would be from a shop that's brand new. Um, so the plan is to take some really nice photos of the horses and put them in. Although I only have, they only had three and I have four horses. So the plan is to put maybe Duke and Mickey in one because they're like the smallest. I feel like that would be really cute. Maybe even like black and white photos to go with sort of the oldie vibe. Um, if we open up in here, this is sort of my everything wardrobe. So it has literally like lots of different bits and bobs, but it's actually pretty well organized, pretty impressed. So I have my shadow back protector and then I have my body protectors here as well. At the bottom, I have some spare half pads. Uh, here I have some clippers. Um, so I'm really lucky to be sponsored by Lister and they actually sent me these ones recently. They're like some little ones that I can use for the little areas. Um, let me just zip it back up. It also fits perfectly in here. Like how satisfying is that? I have my air jacket in here again, fits perfectly. So this top shelf here, I wasn't too sure what to put in here. So it's kind of become my emergency shelf. So any little things where you're like, oh my goodness, where is that? I need it. So we have all of the farrier's tools because um, if you have a horse that likes to pull off shoes or has a horse that has a hanging off shoe, these are very useful to have. Um, I feel like it's a skill in life to know how to take off a horse's shoe in an emergency. 
I've had to do that one too many times. Uh, we have plating bands in case I need them for whatever reason. They're always useful. And then I also have my medical armband for cross country that I wear in case I fall off somewhere randomly in a field and nobody knows who I am. Um, I have, again, my big, um, really cool tote that has my list of clippers in. Pop that back, again, fits perfectly. It was like it was made for me, guys. Um, in the top shelf here, I have all of my show ear bonnets. So all of sort of my like branded ones or ones that are sort of a more neutral color, such so as like a plain gray one. So I'll slide that back. And then I have all of my um, lunging equipment. So I have my lunge line. I have um, all those bits and bobs. And then lastly, at the bottom, I have all of my reflective gear. So I have a reflective ear bonnet. I, that, these really need a wash, actually. I use them all the time because I do hack like... I try to switch up schooling with hacking quite a bit. I never like to really go in the school two days in a row, if that makes sense, or doing like flat work two days in a row, or jumping two days in a row. Anyway, um, I have... Yeah, quite a lot of reflective stuff. I have my orange brick one. I just have a yellow, this one. Oh my goodness, this one I have had since I was eight, since I got Mickey and it actually fits really well. It just looks like it's cropped. And uh, we have some chewage on here where Mickey uh, has chewed it, but it still works really well. So, you know, I was having a really nice helmet bag. So if I go to clinics and shows and things or travel about, then I just have some spare white show saddle pads at the bottom that are branded. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much the wardrobe. I feel like I could probably put more stuff in here, but for now it's a nice amount. Like there's more little compartments and things or more space in the compartments. Uh, so yeah, that's that. We also have these really cute lights. Did I just put them up today? Yes, it was quite difficult. Might have broken a bulb in the process, but we did have a spare one. Um, I think they look really cool. Um, before I've always had like really small thin fairy lights and I decided to go for big chunky industrial ones because I thought again it went more with the aesthetic I was going for but also when the lights are turned off I feel like the bulbs still kind of look pretty without being annoying if you know what I mean. Here we have one of my favourite parts and that is the sink. It is almost complete. We do need to do a little bit more, this is me plumbing here, for it to be all on and working. So this is going to be my tack cleaning station. I also need to put my hook up here so I can clean my bridle. But oh my goodness, I love how I went for the dark grey on here. I almost went for the light grey that I used in the feed room. But I feel like the dark grey really makes the whole shoes stand out, especially I went for gold. I, at first I was like, oh my goodness, is gold going to be too much? But I, I think I think I can pull it off. We also have another mirror here that is just gorgeous. This was really, really cheap. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is massive. I don't think it's that old. It's probably only a few years old that somebody's just like dumped at a charity shop or something. But I thought it was so pretty. It does kind of annoy me that it's like not the exact same color as the picture frames here. But again, I found some more old fashioned horse photos or um, paintings that I thought were really cute. Like look at these two little guys on a farm. I love big heavy horses. I think they're so cute. Anyway, we have, we have, I don't know what this is the collection, the obsession, the hoard of saddle pads. I always get so embarrassed showing all my saddle pads because there are just too many. I, no, no, nobody needs this many. Lumia are very generous. They, they have made the saddle pad dream come true. Um, but yeah, any, any color of the rainbow, I pretty much have it. Um, we also have all of my leather head collars, like show ones here. We have a, a head collar of Mickey's. We have Duke's little baby one that's a little, little old. I don't want to use it on him because like it is, I was going to send it back to World Horse Welfare because they technically kind of own it, but it's literally about to fall apart and I feel like it wouldn't be safe to use on a horse anymore because it's like so used. But look how tiny, Look how tiny it is. It's so cute. He does have a new one now that's the same size, but uh, that's in the other, that's in the storeroom. We have my lunging, Cavison, more head cords. Oh, we have another saddle here. Um, this is a new one that Voltaire have sent me to try with Casper. This is from their Essentials range and it's a jumping one. So um, that doesn't have, doesn't have a place yet, but we do have that. I actually, it's 
can't really tell you this, <laughs> but um, I do have something coming very soon that might take up a bit more of this empty space that I can put a saddle on. You'll have to wait and see for that, but that's quite exciting. But it might take a while to arrive because they've got to make it. Um, and then I have all the head collars again, lots of different pretty colors. Let me know what your favorite color is. But um, yeah, when it was in the old tack room, I didn't realize how much stuff I had. Now it's in a big room and it's all spread out. It's still quite surreal, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the little tack room section of the tour. I'm still so in love with it everywhere. Like obviously if this was a normal working yard where you had to quickly get loads of horses in and out ridden, that kind of thing, this would not be practical. But for me with my horses and the job that I do, I wanted it to be really aesthetic and pretty to look at because this is probably gonna be the background for a lot of my videos when I'm filming and things. Um, so that, that was kind of one of the reasons why I wanted to make it so pretty. But also this is, I had my, my first ever proper tack room was in the old feed, was in the new feed room. Um, and it was quite small and, but it was the perfect size for me when I needed it. And like before that, I always kept my tack in the garage. So I remember being so excited and so grateful when I just had a room that I could put my tack in. And now to have a room that has electrics, heating, it even has like a plug socket so I can charge my phone in. Like this is honestly so surreal and a dream to me. So thank you, I'm so grateful. I feel like I've been way too excited in today's video. So I'll try, I'll try and turn it down a little bit. I've, yeah. I'm just speechless. I can't, I can't believe this is mine, so thank you. This is the way out. <laughs>